His name 
God has been good. And so the, the whole of this week, I've been singing one song. What the enemy meant for evil. God turned it around. He turned it around. For the end, let evil God turn it around. He turn it around. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For evil, God turn. For according to your knowledge and your will for me, what you say you will die. I just need to alive. Lift up your hands because you are not a mother. Church is your mind. Oh. Those that know you will trust in you. The nothing horses and tarry your lift up your voice. But on I'm a bless. No man can prevail. No man, no man, no man, no man. My confidence is you, what is that, what is that, hey, yeah, yeah. you can ever lift up your voice, you do not lie, you do not lie, you do not fail, what is hard for you to do, nothing else is true, it can never, ever exist. Come on, somebody begin to speak in other tongues if you can. Speak in other tongues if you can. Bible says that building up yourself in the most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on, you want to charge up tonight. You want to get ready as a move sparker. Leparo Sekenema. This is an atmosphere where God is already moving, where the glory of God is visible in our midst. You want to blow in other tongues. Eta de Shabadoa, Etanima Shabada, Otenema Shabadea, Atanama, Jude verse 20. He said, Building up yourself in the most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost at the Tempest Shepherd at the Nima Come on, you are shifting something in the atmosphere. You are bringing something down from heaven. At the the Dema, you are bringing some dead destinies back to life. Come on, come on, come on. Here I pass. Who did the bars? He does speak in an unknown tongue. Speak it not unto man, but speak it unto God. You want to speak it, speak it like you mean it. He at the pass. He did the bepire. Who said bepire? Who taught a tie? He said me pata. Destinies are better. Destinies are coming forth. Delay us, sister. I'm becoming something of the past. He did the bepire. He said papa. Who said bepire? He papa. Hey papa, hey papa, who said in my partana? In the name of Jesus, what a glory! You want to celebrate our man of God? Come on, celebrate the man of God. Celebrate the man of God. <laughs> you may be seated for some few minutes. Some of you are tired. And listen to this one. Bible says in the book of some hundred, the verse number four. You know it in the KJV. He said that I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. And I will enter his court with praise. But look at what the message Bible is saying. The verse 4. He said, enter with password. Say password. Are you with me? He said, enter with password. Thank you. Say thank you. Thank you. And make yourselves at home. Glory to God. The message Bible is saying that enter with password. That is to say, if you are coming to the presence of the Lord, there are certain gates you cannot enter without the password. And he said the password is thank you. There is a revelation here. Catch it. Hallelujah. That means that before you can boldly come before the presence of the Lord, if you are not, you are not having a, a heart of gratitude, 
You cannot come boldly before the presence of God. He said, enter with a password. Thank you. Shout thank you. And make yourselves at home. And talk in praise. Come on, tell somebody, talk praise. Talk praise tonight. Tell somebody, talk praise tonight. And talk in praise. And worship him. Come on, what a glory. What a glory. You want to celebrate the man of God once again. In fact, he has given you the full access for tonight. Tell somebody, I have the full access. In the name of Jesus. In fact, we are live on Facebook. Hallelujah. The whole world is watching the program right now. Hallelujah. I want you to grab your phone. We want to do something right now. Everybody lift your phones up. Lift your phones. Lift your phones. The whole world should hear of this program. Hallelujah. There is a move. There is a revival. We are sparking in this end time. Hallelujah. You want to take your phones? Go to Facebook. Hallelujah. The handle is Pascal K. Amanfo. Are you with me, somebody? The name is Apostle Pascal K. Amanfo. Hallelujah. Go to Facebook right now. You want to share it. Share it. Share it with somebody. Those who are not here, share the link. Share the link. Share the link. Come on, somebody. Share it. Share it. Concentrate on your phones. Make sure you are sharing with about 500 people. Hallelujah. Share with everybody on your contact. Hallelujah. We are birthing some revival in this end time. Hallelujah. People of God are going to stand for the kingdom of God. You are blessed to be a part of it. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. Share the link. Share the link. Share the link. Pascal K. Amanfo. Go to Facebook. Come on. Everywhere. Go there. Go there. Share the link. You want to share the link right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People are gifted. Hallelujah. But they are disappointed. People are gifted, but they, they, they have nowhere to go and polish their gift. Hallelujah. People are gifted, but they are giving up along the line. But there is a hope in the house tonight. Hallelujah. I feel hope. I feel hope. Hopes are coming alive. Destinies are coming back to life. Hallelujah. You might think that the Lord has deserted you. Come on. Come on. Some of you have been crying for a moment. Bible says that for weeping may endure for the night. But I see joy coming coming in the morning after this conference somebody is going to live here with some joy i can hear you in the house somebody as you are sharing the link you are going to live here with joy you have wept for a longer time but i see your face becoming the talk of town i see you becoming the brand ambassador i see you becoming come on come on come on i see you becoming the face of ghana in the global markets come on you are taking the anointing of God into the marketplaces. Uh, you will act and turn somebody's heart unto the Lord. You will act and somebody will give his life to Christ. You will act and move it and somebody will ask you, who is this woman who is so holy, who is crowned in holiness and glory? Because of you, I am giving my entire life to Christ. Glory to God. Have you said a link? Share the link, share the link, share the link. Those who have been praying on online with, with the man of God, Pastor Elvis, hallelujah. All you hear is share the link, share the link, share the link. Somebody share the link for tonight's event, hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is moving as you are sharing the link, somebody. Let somebody watch and give his life to Christ, hallelujah. Let somebody watch and give a meaning back to his life, hallelujah. Pe people are lost on well. If you don't know, I'm telling you, hey, people are sad. People have become wondrous. Hallelujah. Somebody can wake up from the bed early in the morning. In fact, only here, he can be walking to and fro. Hey, obet me, I'm sorry. Ote, odoko haya. Obet me, I'm not going to cry because he doesn't have anything to do. But if that person stands and he, he begins to display some gift, eh? Hey, In fact, give somebody hope tonight. Share the link, share the link, share the link. Share the link. Come on. Don't be selfish tonight. Share the link. The name is pa Pascal K. Amanfo. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In fact, at this moment, uh, I believe that some people have gone through some, um, some tough times. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's be realistic. Amen. In fact, let me encourage you before we enter into that time. Hallelujah. There is a great revival. Are you with me? Anytime there is a great revival, you don't need much people to spark the, that particular revival. Hallelujah. You, you don't need enough people. Amen. There was a time that there was a great famine in the land. It took some lepers. There were just four of them. Hallelujah. 
who brought back joy. They restored a whole nation. Hallelujah. It took four lepers. In fact, these people were disadvantaged men. They were people that people had deserted them. In fact, they, they were sitting at the, how do you call it, at the outskirts of the city. Hallelujah. They, 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 had, they had left them in some part of the villages. But when the time came for God to use them, I believe that Bible says that when they began to move into the camp of the enemy, the enemy heard the, 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 the sound of their feet like, like some mighty chariots, like thousand men who are coming to, to raid the camp of the enemy. And Bible recorded that the enemy flee and they brought joy back to the city of Israel. Hallelujah. And in fact, tonight, you are here to bring some radical change in our generation. Ah, you, you can't hear me, somebody. We are not enough here. But trust me, you are like a nation. Oh, somebody, I am a nation. Oh, you are a whole nation seated here. Hallelujah. In fact, in this movie industry, yeah, hey, people are really compromising. Woman of God. People are compromising. And yes, sir, do you agree with me? People are going through things that they are not supposed to go through. Just for the sake of, I want to play a role. <laughs> Hallelujah. In fact, Hallelujah. At this moment, our Vishnia, our father, want us to share some experiences voluntarily. Volunteer. You have some experiences that you like to share with somebody. That would at least encourage somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. You remember those times that you went for, for sets? The, the director was telling you that if you don't do this, I won't do this to you. Hallelujah. You remember some challenges you went through before you were able to shoot one movie? Your, your face was able to appear on camera, on TV. Hallelujah. Just, just go deep down within you. There are certain things that you like to share with somebody. Somebody is watching you somewhere. You can encourage that person. You can give hope. You can give meaning to that person's life. Hallelujah. Let's not be selfish. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we have some people ready to share with us some experiences in the movie industry? Hallelujah. We are young people, but I believe that where some young people have tread, some grown people have not, uh, uh, have not even ventured that place. Hallelujah. <laughs> Give it up, give it up to her. Give it up to her. She's giving us some experiences in a, in a movie, in a movie, in a movie career. Hallelujah. In fact, me who is a bibu or no person here can. Me boa na. Catch up, me say me boa. Am I telling lies? Me boa, me boa. Come on, celebrate me, celebrate me. Matching, matching alive and colored. Hallelujah. kind of experience where um, you you are called on set and then the director or maybe the cameraman or somebody that assists the director says that um, you have to um, do this with me you would have to maybe I would have to beg you I would have to beg you before you get this role and it got me disappointed. I decided I, I, want, I, wanted to, I wanted out of this movie industry. And then I think recently one great director, I'm not going to mention his name, had a chat with me on Facebook. And then he told me that that is what is going on. As a woman, if you want to go higher, you would have to make up your mind that many directors are going to be sleeping with you. So I have to sit down and think about it. 
and make my mind up that if I want to do it, then I should be ready that many directors, producers, whoever are going to want to sleep with me. So I should just make up my mind. And then I decided, no, that's not the road I want to take. So it, it broke me and then I decided I wanted out. I wasn't going to do this movie thing anymore. So the sleeping, the sex thing is actually real in the industry. So that is my experience. Good evening, everyone. Okay, um, let me just introduce myself properly. I'm a Nigerian, actually. So I got engaged to a Ghanaian, and I moved to Accra three months ago. So back in Nigeria, you know how competitive the Nigerian entertainment industry is. I've been to several auditions. What I really do is write scripts. I really don't want to be in the face on the movie or on the screen. I just write. It's a talent I discovered since I was eight. I could gather kids, like tell them stories, and they believe maybe I heard it from someone else or something. And then when I started to read and write, I started to write my script. So what they do is they get my script and then maybe tell me, oh, it's trash. You have to work on it. And then when I'm watching the movie, I'm like, this is my script, I know it, but then I don't get the um, ownership of the script. So I, I told myself, okay, I stopped giving them my script. I don't get paid, sometimes I pay, I'm paid peanuts and all. So I told myself, okay, I'm not going to do this. So I keep writing because it comes and I can't help it, I'll have to write something down. So I just write and then I keep, I write and I keep. So when I came, I've been talking to Papa for a while on Instagram. And then I saw this and I said, okay, let me just. But what they made me understand was for me to get there, I'll have to penetrate in a negative way and all that. So I told myself that wasn't what I wanted for myself because I know that I was a decent person. And part of my life, I am a very godly person. I put God first in everything that I do. So I told myself, no, if there is a time for me to showcase what I've got, it's the time will pop up. I don't need to force myself into anything or give up myself just because I want to be there. So I gave up. I started going after entertainment writing and all of that, pursuing the entertainment industry for like five years. I started since I was 22. I based in Abuja. So I see them, I go to them. This is what they tell me. And... I have some of the director's contacts. The chats are there, but I'm not mentioning anyone's name. So I figured this is how they want to do it. And I told myself, oh, I'm done. I'm not going to go after it and all of that. So today I feel like something different is going to not just happen to me, but everyone to take it. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, come on, celebrate our sister. Celebrate. Oh, celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Celebrate our sister, somebody. In fact, what she's going through, no, any easy, oh, hallelujah. Oh, come on, our papa just walked in. Come on, with a standing ovation, let's receive our papa. Let's receive our papa. God bless you. God bless you so much. Amen. In fact, we bless God for there are still remnants. Hallelujah. There was a time in the Bible where a woman rose up, an evil woman. Hallelujah. Her name was Jezebel. Say Jezebel. In fact, she rose up and tormented the prophet Elijah. Hallelujah. A whole prophet of the land, as a then, he was a major prophet. That man was anointed, Elijah. Hallelujah. But a woman was able to chase that man out of a city. And the whole man of God was hiding. He went to look for a place to hide. And he was asking God questions. That God, why have you allowed Jezebel to torment me like that? I am the only prophet standing on the land. And God told him, the master, shut up. Hallelujah. And God told him that, Master, there are still about 9,000 of my prophets 
who have still not given up and kissed their feet of Baal. Hallelujah. And I came here to tell somebody that after tonight's program, we are raising that 9,000 people who are not going to kiss their feet of Baal. You are not in the house, somebody. We are raising those 9,000 people. We are turning the world around. Hallelujah. In fact, listen to me. After the pandemic, eh, the pandemic came to raid everything. The pandemic came to change the system of the world. Hallelujah. But God is saying that after the coronavirus, if coronavirus, a deadly thing caused by man, can able to affect the entire world, how much more the final move of God that is about to release? After the corona, there is a last move. There is a last revival that the Lord is about to pour out the spirit upon all flesh that you women and men who are in the movie industry are about to show the glory of God. We are moving beyond the borders of the church. We will not only be actors in the church, but in our workplaces, wherever we find ourselves, we are going to demonstrate Christ. We are demonstrating Christ in every facet of our life. We are leaving this place out of a vision of a man that God is endorsing us in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you here with me? There is a final revival. And we are so blessed and so pleased to be part of this, this move. Hallelujah. There is hope. Tell somebody there is hope. Tell somebody don't give up. Sister Flora, or is it Flora? There is hope for you. So far as she said, she's a godly person. Ah, come on. Bible says that in a, in, a, in a big house, they are not only the vessel of gold, they are not only the vessel of clay, but there is also another vessel of wood. Hallelujah. Bible says that if you purge yourself, you shall be fit for the master's use. Hallelujah. This move that our father is helping us build is a move that people are going to, are going to act movies for years. Man of, daddy, there was a testimony I was reading yesterday. Please be encouraged, somebody. I read it from our very own Prince David Osei. Hallelujah. He had an interview on OKFM on one of these stations. And then they were interviewing him about these men who sleep with, directors who sleep with, they are members and what have you messing around all over the place. And then this man said something I was, I was, I was like, wow. This is the man that people will see out there and be thinking, say, this man is just some, somebody taking advantage of people. He said that for the past 15 years he has been in the movie industry. He has never touched any woman in the movie industry before. This, this testimony is worth celebrating. You are not here. You are not here. Somebody has been in this industry for three years. That person is counting 300 women. Oh, no, mother. Come on. There are still remnants. Oh. And tonight, God is going to use us as holy entities, as righteous men, to affect the lives of people positively, to affect the nations of the world. Hallelujah. At this moment, we like our brother, thy will, to bless us with administration. Whilst we get, we get ready for the, for the last move. Hallelujah. In fact, I'm so blessed though. Listen to me. When the man of God was ministering to us, he took us into a dimension of God. Hallelujah. Thy will is about to take us into another dimension. And we are about to enter into the last realm. Hallelujah. If a plane is about to take off, the plane walks the wrong way. Are you with me? Before the plane will fly into the skies, he walks the wrong way before he enters into the skies. Hallelujah. We are just walking and we are about to fly. Somebody, fasten your seatbelt. There is something about to hit your life right now that will take us there. Ah, yeah, yeah, me the moon, yeah, me. Abraham, me to see. Now me the yeah, yeah. Ah, so man, oh, and yeah, 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 yeah. And you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am the moon, I am and you, 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 and you
Celebrate him. That's so powerful. Amen. Yeah. This house, this house, there are engines in this household. Hallelujah. In fact, this is the moment you have all been waiting for. I want to give somebody the opportunity once again. If you have not shared the link, if you have not helped somebody sitting in the house, take your phone, go to Facebook right now. We are live. Go to Pascal K. Amanfo. We are live there. Share the live link. Let somebody join and be a blessing. Hallelujah. Share the link, share the link, pick up your phones, pick up your phones for the last time, pick up your phones for the last time. We are, we are, we are about to write some histories down tonight. Destiny is about to be birthed tonight, hallelujah. You don't want somebody to be a dropout of these blessings that the Lord is about to give to somebody, hallelujah. Take your phones right now, in the next one minute, share the link with somebody, let somebody be a blessing, let somebody be a blessing. This is the last time you are picking up your phone, share the link. Pascal K. Amanfo on Facebook. Share the link. Let somebody be a blessing right now. Let someone be a blessing. Let someone be a blessing. Let someone be a blessing. There are lots of talents out there. There are lots of gifts out there. Come on. Share the link and bring a meaning to life, somebody's life today. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the moment you have all been waiting for. Hallelujah. The clouds are already gathered. The Bible says that when the clouds are full of rain, they come down as rain hallelujah when the clouds are fully guarded they empty itself as rain so hallelujah amen. it's about to rain amen. amen the lord is about to touch somebody here tonight you are not here your response will show the blessing you are taking home hallelujah amen. i said the lord is about to turn destinies around the lord is about to elect and select somebody jealously to affect the nations of the world 
with a stunning ovation. The Bible says that give honor to whom honor is due. This is our father, the anointed apostle of God, full of power, full of anointing. In this end time, you want to celebrate our father Pascal, a man for, come on, come on, to bless us tonight with a moment of truth. Hallelujah. 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 Could you help me welcome someone by your side? Just turn to them and say, it's good that you came tonight. Come on. Welcome somebody. Go across the aisle. Give somebody a good God bless you. Just welcome somebody by your side and you may be seated. Can I get volume on the microphone? Hallelujah. Just welcome somebody. Tell them I'm excited that you are here tonight. I'm excited that you are here tonight. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated. Okay. Now, I want to do this as quickly as possible for the extent of what I feel that the Lord will have me do tonight. I want you to do just three things before I kick start tonight. One is that First of all, I think I need to say hi to everyone online. I see that most people watching online. God bless you, everyone who joined us online tonight. God bless you. I see all of you. Um, I have a few names in my head, but now they are all physical. But God bless you tonight for joining us online. Okay. Now, quickly into it. Tell someone by your side, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. All right. Now, I want to ask one question. Is everyone here a believer? Is everyone here born again? No, answer me like you know it. Is everyone here born again? The reason why I'm asking is that if you're here and you're not born again, some of the things I will share might, mm, might not settle well in your spirit. That's why I'm asking that. Okay. Now, I'm not asking if you pray 12 hours a day or if you fast for seven days a week. I'm just saying, are you born again? Is everyone here born again? Has everyone here received the precious gift of the Holy Spirit? Can you wave your hands and talk to me? Hallelujah. I'm also asking that because some of the things I will say tonight. Because you see, I could have said, I could have said um, how to be a star summit. Or how to, you know, one of those things we say, how to, how to be famous. But it specifically says how to break through as a believer so that zones this meeting to a particular type of people. Now, within those sect of believers, I hope tonight I can find very frustrated people in this building. Uh, and I, you're, not, you're not sounding, you guys are sounding too... Yeah, I hope I can find very frustrated people People who feel like I have, I have done everything by the book and still it's not working. People who have possibly been in this same industry for years. And I found out that the movie industry can steal 10 years of your life like this. And trust me, except for the fact that your wig has changed or your clothes has changed, you cannot look at yourself and see one considerable step you have made in that 10 years. All you will see are auditions, series or movies that never saw the light of day. Am I talking to somebody? Your pictures with one or two stars when you went to one premiere and said, please, can I take a picture with you? You know, and you posted a picture and put hashtag, we are coming, this is my year. And it ended up not being your year. And you hope for the next year, you know. And then at some point, somebody said, provoke a divine intervention. You went to go and fast. And you showed up for the audition. In fact, that was the day they rejected you. <laughs> and then somebody said, ah, you know, you know, you are born again. You can't be in the movie industry. I said, what has light got to do with darkness? You know, and so you started feeling that, ah, it's a crazy world. You know, so when people tell me this, let me just say this quickly. When people tell me that the movie industry is filled with sex. Can I say that word here? Is that okay? You know, it's filled with sex. I ask them, have you tried going to the bank to get a job? 
Have you tried being a nurse in a hospital? The point is, sex is everywhere in our generation. The reason why it's peculiar to the movie industry is because we are in the media that shows everything we do. If I tell you how many doctors are night shifts, I say, nurse. Go to the bank and get a job because they all wear tie in the bank. They look like, please, good morning, sir. Can I serve you tea? The immorality we are dealing with is not peculiar to showbiz industry. It's everywhere in our generation. It's everywhere. Let a man stop you on the street now and, and say, I want to help you. The next minute after telling you how you are such a beautiful young lady. Oh, you have potentials. Immediately next, what follows? So it's what? It's a generational problem, not an industry problem. So don't let that... Don't let that become a deterrent that stops you from your dreams. Otherwise, you have to go and live on the mountain somewhere in Shah Hills. Let God feed you manna and quail if you don't want to deal with that problem. You will face that problem in the movie industry. You will face it in every facet of life today. So it's better you start what knowing how to what confront it. I, I, might, I might say something today. So I just want to say that as an emphasis. No, now let's go quickly. If anyone comes late, I will not go back. Let's go quickly now. So having established the fact that everyone here is a believer and spirit-filled, now let's go to it. One, I want to quickly answer two questions. And I want to let you know something tonight. That I do this not because I'm a profound speaker or I just feel the need to do this. I believe God without any shadow of doubt. That somebody tonight, listen, 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 I, I want to tell you this. Okay, I say this on this authority, not just on the apostolic authority of my calling, on the authority of the fact that I have done this conservatively for about 21 years. 21 years. I tried to think prior to this meeting and count the list of films and I lost count as a writer as a director, as an actor, I tried to. I wanted to have a number to the amount of productions I've been in, and I lost count. On my last check, my last check, except, except the iconic Richard Muffet Damijo, and who else? I can't see any core Nollywood actor who I haven't directed, who hasn't starred in a script I wrote, or who I haven't acted with on set. I said core Nollywood. I'm not saying there are a couple of new generation folks. God bless them. I'm saying core. I'm going back to the days of Genevieve all that way. I'm, I, 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 I'm singling out this name, Uncle, Uncle Richard's name, because it's one person I always dreamt of, and I never had the opportunity yet. And I, till date, I remember he's never done my script, because I spent five years writing actively. Every other person, from the legendary Genevieve Naji, to Amatala Jalade KD, to Iniedo, every other person... I have either worked with, directed on set, or acted with in these 21 years. So, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to be telling you stuff, not just on scriptural authority, but on experiential knowledge. The stuff that my hands have handled, what my eyes have seen. Also, transiting from a very secular space. Of being just a guy wanting to make it. Crazily wanting to make it. And having nothing. Maybe like some of you today. Having nothing. To being in the space where. I have my work being shown. Followed. Acknowledged. Awarded. On different platforms. So it means that 21 years ago, although I didn't have a summit like this to be in, I was sitting down somewhere in my room dreaming of what would become of my life. 21 years ago. Dreaming of what would become of 
my life. Permit me to say, some of my family is online. I don't know how. They, prior to that time, or by the years, we seen that my parents had gone through a very terrible divorce. So I was at a point in my life where it was a make or break for me. And I was thinking, God, what do I do with my life? Sitting in a single room somewhere in the heartbeat of Lagos, not knowing how my life will turn out. No idea, no help. Never seen a script in my entire life. Never been to an audition, never seen a camera, but just with a dream and believing God that some way, somehow, it will all fall into place. What does that tell you? It tells you that every singular dream of your heart that you have tonight is valid. I said every singular dream of your heart. Can I push it further and let you know that till date, my mother, God bless her, didn't even know how I got here. My mother was forced into those kind of mothers who you were either a doctor, an engineer, or a lawyer, or you have failed. How many of you know those kind of mothers? It's either you are a doctor, you are an engineer. If you don't have a, an occupation that has a prefix to your name, you have failed in life and you have failed terribly. That was my mother. And so, it, 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 it became harder with the fact that my father was a doctor. So, you know when all those things, you have to follow in your father's footsteps. So, imagine, and my mother was a nurse. So, you know those kind of homes, you know. So, now, imagine you getting up and saying, film. You know how stupid you look for even daring. And my mother will ask me questions like, how do you think you can make a life from this? Now, I don't know how many of you are Nigerians here, but there's, um, how do I say this so you understand it? The Yorubas have a word for explaining people who do this thing. They say, oh man, Sherry, it's, yeah, it feels like you are, they do play. So, it feels like play. And for my generation growing up, you were a loser to be jumping around cameras or theater. You, you, you had to be a riffraff. You had to be someone who has failed in life. It's like all else has failed, then you suddenly rim. And then it didn't help with the fact that most artists would have dreadlocks or earrings. That was the word. For my father, you, you, you had to be a colossal failure. Are you understanding that? That's my kind of background. So 21 years ago, this is me. Nursing those dreams in my heart. Not having the effrontery to tell anybody. Not knowing how my life is going to turn out. Now, I want to help you with this tonight. I want to go quickly. At some point, if I speak, if it sounds like I'm preaching, forgive me. It's just something that happens with this particular topic and addressing young people like myself. Okay, quickly. There's nothing I can speak about today that will not have roots from this particular scripture. Right? Because um, from the onset of my ministry, God showed me that scripture. And it's something that shaped my walk with God and my arrival at where I am now. Okay? Now, if you have a Bible on your phone, quickly go with me. Jeremiah 1 and verse 5. Quickly. Quickly. Pastor Jamin, I see you. I was almost there, but I had to stop myself. I see you. I see you. Jeremiah 1 and verse 5, quickly. That's why I asked you if everyone here is born again. Because the baseline for whatever I'm going to share today is going to be God's word. Jeremiah 1 and verse 5. Are you there? If you're there, shout, I am there. Okay. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. I will read the King James translation. The King James translation, because it's one of my favorite translations. Jeremiah 1 and verse 5. Okay. Okay, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, 
I sanctify thee and ordain thee a prophet to the nations. Now, watch this. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Now, I get excited when I find the scripture, but I try not to go so fast. Now, I want you to give me your attention now. God says, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Now, if you, if you think about that and you break that down, logically speaking, that doesn't make any sense. How do I know you even before you are formed? Because normally, you ought to be formed physically. That brings you into existence for God to say, for anyone, for that matter, say, I know you. God says, ever before I formed you, I knew you. Now, that means that, it probably means that, and suggestively means that, you existed before you were created. I, have I lost you somewhere? You were in existence before you were created. He says, before I formed you, I knew you. That means you existed before you were created. Now, if I accept that fact that maybe some way, somehow, I existed before I was created, the next question would be, where did I exist? Now, help me. I'll help you with this. And the, the Lord will help me know by revelational knowledge that you existed in the mind of God. I want everyone to get this. This forms the basis for everything I'm going to share with you tonight for the next 15, 20 minutes. It means you existed in the mind of God. God summoned an idea. Watch this. God had an idea in his mind. And God says, I'm going to put flesh and bones upon this idea. I'm going to release this idea upon the face of the earth. And impregnate this idea with a specific purpose. So it means that God is intentional about his intentions. That you couldn't have arrived here by mistake. Now the point I'm trying to make to you is that everything that you arrived with could not have been a mistake. That your affinity for acting, that your talent, that your gifting, everything that makes up your persona and your total identity could not have been a mistake. Because God was so particular about who he made and what purpose he planted upon the face of the earth. It means, ladies and gentlemen, that when your father and mother got together to say, let's have a baby, that was not your beginning. You existed in eternity and got released in time. Ah, God. So everything that you are is a profile for your destiny. So because why I'm sharing this with you is that many times believers don't even know if their talent is God-given. Or if that talent can be expressed in a secular industry. Because people make you feel that. Or how do I say this? People make you feel that because of the notion the industry has, your talent can be God-given. God put that talent in you for a particular purpose. He was particular about your arrival here on earth. When your mother and father, when your mother had a baby, everybody got together and said, hey, what's the gender? God wasn't looking for a gender. God was seeing an agenda. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is a reason why God put that thing. In fact, may I go by extension? There is a reason why you are, you are born from the family you are born in. I know we have this message of generational curses. Oh, I mean, why am I born from this family? God was particular about your planting in that family. There is something that you carry in the bowels of your spirit that is necessary to rewrite the destiny of that family. There is something that God put on the inside.
inside of you. It may be that little dream. It may be that thing in you that when you look at yourself, you see stardom, you see glory. You look around and you cannot afford to remain small. Something in your belly tells you that you are greater than how you are. You look at yourself. You don't have anything. But something in the womb of your spirit is pushing you, is urging you, is making you understand that you are bigger than what you are now. Come on, put your hands together. Celebrate my brother, Prince David. I say, come on. Come on, come on. There is something that God put on your inside. There is something that he planted there. And let me, let me help you with this. It means that your existence is not hinged or pedestal on your father saying hi to your mother, let's have a baby. No. You were an idea in the mind of God. So, 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 why am I saying that? So nothing about my background should define my future. Nothing about where I come from should be a determinant for what I'm going to become. Nature might have defined me some way. Nurturing defined me another way. I don't care what family you came from. If you have a dream, my God, if you have a dream enough and you have the temerity and you have the effrontery to hold on to that dream. Your dream has the ability to grow wings. Your dream can announce you in countries that your father's legs never touched. Your dream can announce your name. I don't care what your background is, what they say happened in your father's family or your mother's family. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can find one young girl tonight that has a dream in her spirit and say regardless of what the world says, I will not give up I will not quit. If I can find one young boy that says, my God, I dare to dream. God put this thing in me for a purpose. Nations will hear my name. Nobody in my family ever rose up and became anything. But as for me, as for me, I will break protocols. I will change the rules. I don't have all it takes, but I have grace. I don't have all it takes, but I have favor and if you have the hand of God over your life uh, I don't care what hell throws against you uh, I don't care what the devil says uh, when your God says yes uh, no man can say no uh, when he opens the door no man can shut uh, if God be for you uh, who can be against you sorry I didn't mean to go there I just wanted to so you see there's something that God put in you that you arrived here with. That's why you see that many times your parents are not getting to know you. <laughs> you know, they're not getting to know you. I said, but I, I don't know where she got this her singing thing from. Oh. I, have, you, have you had comments like that? I don't know where she got this her. Have you, have you had some, some parents who even try and shut you down? You, you're always feeling that your dreams are too big. You are too out there. You want to be out there. You want to be out there. Our family, we are quiet to keep, keep you know, don't, don't, don't allow our enemies see us. Keep your voice down, you know. Have you, have you had mothers like that? My mother says that all the time. You are too out there. She'll say it in a, there's a particular expression of Nigerian pidgin English. She'll say, um, make people no good, they put eye for your body. I don't know who understands that, you know, I can like let people not notice you. But mother, what I carry cannot be quiet. Oh my God. <laughs> what I carry cannot be quiet. Uh, why is that? Well, can I preach for one minute? Uh, so when Moses was born, uh, they tried to hide the baby for three months. Uh, but it got to the third month. Uh, uh, the baby could no longer be hidden. Someone under the sound of my voice, uh, there is a baby that you carry that cannot hide for too long. Uh, it has been obscured uh, and kept quiet. But your season is coming up uh, when your baby will shout uh, your season is coming uh, when there's a shaking uh, something in, on the inside of you has to break out uh, something has to break loose uh, and tonight I hear God say uh, you have come to the labor world of destiny after tonight's meeting uh, somebody's about to push out a career 
You are about to push out a dream. If you will clap your hands and pray now, for the next one second, somebody's baby is about to leap. Somebody's baby is about to catch fire. Something is about to come upon you. The anointing for greatness, the anointing for establishment. Lift up your head, oh ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Gates are opening to you. Receive divine access for your destiny somebody shouted I receive it sit down so if we establish that fact hear me now let's come to my brother is here I want him to share some deep stuff thank you for the MC saying that before he walked in you see when you look at people in this industry Okay, let me even call the ones that are my friends or my brothers. Let me not speak for everyone in the industry, the ones I know at least. For many people that I call my brothers and my friends, I call them that because beneath all the trappings of stardom is an experience of divinity that has shaped them. Yeah, you may not know. And I am privileged that he's one person that at least, not because somebody told me, are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> not because somebody told me. Because I saw. Uh -huh, so I'm not reporting to you what I, what, because I saw. So every time, and he's, he's always been very open to share stuff. So you're going to hear today days of fasting from him. So the next time you go on Instagram page and you're seeing him post Sniper Day and you think that that's all about his life. Yeah, I know. I know you think that that's all about his life are all about. You're going to hear deep stuff today. But let me, let me just do this and then we enter into the other realm. So having established the fact that you carry a purpose and God put you here for a reason. The next thing I want you to understand is this. Watch me clearly now. There are several mountains of influence. If you are writing, write this clue. There are several mountains of spheres of influence in life. The political sector, the educational sector, sports. There are spheres of influence. When I call them spheres of influence, is that the fact that men who rise to the speak in those spheres wield and carry an unrestrained amount of influence. You understand what I'm saying? A political figure, the president of a country, an MP, has a great amount of influence in sports. Entertainment as a fusion of every genre of the arts is a mountain of influence. It's a sphere of influence in life. That there are iconic figures in show business who rise to such heights not only do they have such a large recognition they have such a great amount of following now watch the next thing i'm going to say the system of the world if you miss this part you've missed why you came tonight the system of the world is not shaped to help to accommodate or to favor the believer what the believer carries is contraband to the system of this world. The system of the world is deliberately shaped, arranged to frustrate what the believer watches, what he carries, and what he stands for. So it is even an irony for the believer to expect the world to accept him. If there are many other statements Jesus made, that's one of the clearest. In the world, yes, I have. The system, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, in whom what? The God of this world had blinded the eyes of them that believe not. There is a blanket covering that forms a system of oppression in the world. So it means that as soon as you come into the movie industry as a child of God, by your position in God, you are challenging that system. 
let me say to help you by your entrance into that industry you walk into a battle that you must fight whether you know it or not whether you want to fight it or not because by your existence in that industry proclaiming God you are challenging the modus operandi of that industry and saying I choose to do things different everything in that system comes against you every singular force of that system is exerted against you what you carry and what you represent to force you to compromise and yield to the predominant system in the industry so watch this every believer who enters the movie industry and you're lucky you're hearing this because I didn't know for many years and I I went full circle to get here every believer in the movie industry should understand one thing now the Lord helped me with something it must have been early this year Acts chapter 2 I won't go there I won't just help you hear something I was asking myself and I've been thinking about that for a while you know because you know we're in church now this is church you know you know when we come to church so much anointing you know lift up your hands some people you know we have great services here people somersault and fall anointing everywhere take it fire I asked I said okay my problem is why is that anointing that power why doesn't it translate to our lives when we go out of church when we're in church people speak some kinds of tongues I said, God, what happens on a Monday morning, 12.05 or whatever, when that believer is outside this environment of church, in the spheres of life, does the Holy Ghost cease operation? Why don't we wield such power that we see when we're in an all night or a church? Where is the power of God in our normal everyday life? What else can the anointing do beyond your tongues? Why am I not seeing the visible effect of the anointing in my everyday life? Now, for the purpose of our meeting tonight, in my career, the Lord said something to me. Watch this. Acts chapter number 2. He says, when the Holy Ghost had come upon the disciples, watch this now. And they began to speak in tongues. How many of you know the story? They all began to speak in other tongues. And watch this. Everybody that was there heard them. Now, people have interpreted this in several ways. I believe that because there was such an amalgamation of people from all over the world in Jerusalem for the Feast of the Pentecost, God gave that peculiar demonstration of the Holy Spirit for the people present in such a way that everybody heard them speak in their own language now watch this they spoke their language watch this don't miss this they spoke their language again they spoke their language but with a different utterance okay, okay you get it when they spoke those tongues they spoke the language of men and men heard them but it wasn't just their language because the language they were speaking they were not taught something gave them utterance there is an is a language of the film industry that you must speak the problem is not speaking the language the question is what is giving you utterance there's a language of the movie industry my talent diction courage delivery all those are languages you must have that refining your talent pronunciations overcoming stage fright it's a language playing to the camera being spontaneous the question is not the language is what is giving you utterance because what is giving them utterance it should be different from what gives you utterance So that we are in the same industry. We are speaking the same language. But what fuels my language is a different utterance. What empowers my delivery is not what empowers your delivery. 
maybe what empowers you is that you slept in the director's room last night but as for me i was up to 3 a.m staring something in the bowels of my i don't know why you came for the audition you came here because your friend told you that he knows the casting that what i came here because when i stepped foot here i said i take dominion in the name of the Lord Jesus we are speaking the same language but a different utterance so don't miss these two things men must hear you speak their language in other words you cannot run from the industry you are planted here men must see you act and say wow you are a bright young girl you know how to act so get that part right but men should not know what is giving you utterance except they're in the upper room with you. Am I helping someone tonight? So what fuels your audacity? What fuels your gifting? What fuels your acting? What fuels your delivery? Must be power beyond the realm of mortality. So the believer who wants to break through the industry, this might sound very harsh, but take it from me. The believer who wants to break through and thinks that talent is enough. My sister, I am sorry. I render my very sincere apologies from the realm of the third heavens. You will be here and discover that many people can act more than a one million others will act more than you. The believer who wants to break that system must understand there's an impression of divinity over a life that gives a man divine advantage. You cannot say you will not bow if there's nothing that giving you spiritual backing. Otherwise, you will bow. That's why many believers live frustrated. They live depressed. Because they have not understood. So many times people, believers come in and they struggle with men speaking their language. And they forget that something else should fuel their utterance. Get this one. First of all, one, identify the gifting deposited on the inside of you. I want you to write this down. Identify what you carry. Embrace your purpose. Whatever that dream is, that gifting is, understand that it was the profile for your destiny. God put that thing on the inside of you for a reason. It is not a mistake. That you have affinity for that thing. God put that thing in you for a specific reason. There is something you carry necessary as a vehicle for your destiny and the arrival at your destination. You must own it. Are you know what I'm saying? You must own it. You must, you must own it. I don't know what own it, but for me, own it meant standing in front of a mirror looking at myself, talking to myself. You must own that gift. You must embody it. Own it means many times pacing my room, giving myself scenarios, just imagining. You must embrace the totality of that gifting. You must understand that this is purpose. As a connection between this gifting that can make, make me a passenger of destiny to where I'm supposed to be. You must own the totality of that gift. Secondly, you must understand that by my entrance into this sphere, automatically I am confronting a system. Why would that help you? That will help you to see your rejections as redirections. That will help you when you, are, when you stand at audition grounds from morning to night and you are not picked. That will help your disappointment and help your frustration. That will help you when somebody who, you, who is visibly less talented than you gets the job and you don't get it you understand i'm confronting a system so you don't go back and throw on the towel and give up and, and beat yourself and say I'm, I'm tired i'm no 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 you understand that i am confronting a system that will help you when somebody gets in and 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 and, and in three months you don't know they are here they are here they are here and you are there you are keeping yourself you are walking in purity and you see them half naked they are twerking here twerking there the next thing they have them um, uh, two hundred thousand followers they are everywhere and they, they are bought a car and you are there and that will help you understand that i what i am confronting a system first thing I'm carrying purpose. 
Second thing, by my entrance into this industry, I immediately confront a system. Third thing, there's a language the industry speaks. Not peculiar to an industry. Medical. Let's let's go. Let's go. Let's use medicine. The born again believer with anointed has to go to medical school, right? As a language that medicine speaks. But what gives the born again medical doctor utterance is different. So when he sees cancer and his test book says six months to die, his utterance can say, the book says six months to die, but there's a balm in Gilead. Are you understanding what gives you entrance? There's a language that everybody speaks, but what fuels your utterance is different. The power backing you. So the third thing you must understand is that in this journey, in this industry, I cannot, you cannot do it without the visible influence and covering of the Holy Spirit. You will be tired. I said, you will be tired. You will give up. And again, taking you back to that language. Speaking the language means refining your talent. Giving time to self-development. Giving time to refining your gifting. Reading books. Learning from actors you admire. All that is necessary for the language of the industry. Networking. That is necessary. That's a language. You must know people. It's show business. People connect. People get to know each other. All that is necessary. But hear me. When all that is done, what fuels your utterance? So let, hear me now. How do I say this? Lord, help me. God, help me. Lord Jesus. Just Jesus, help me. Just a minute. Okay, hear me. There are things that the system of the industry permits. And there are things, okay, let me say this. There are codes and rules that every system carries. How many of you have an ATM card? How many of you know it's the, it's the banking system? So you cannot put your ATM card inside and decide not to type your PIN and want money. The system is programmed. Pew. Name. Welcome. Enter your PIN. The system is programmed to demand your PIN. The system is programmed to demand something from the believer. It's programmed to demand. So the next time somebody says, come pick my hotel room, don't be offended. The system. I'm, I'm happy. The next time somebody says, wow, turn around, turn around, turn around. I like what I see. Wow. Don't be offended. Well, I'm saying that, don't be offended. I'm saying that, understand that the system is programmed what? To demand something from you. It's even more. The system is programmed to demand that you compromise. That's the system. So it's like you standing in front of an ATM saying, I will not enter my pin, but I want 500 CDs. I won't punch in my pin, but I want this money. Now, the mistake we make is because we are in such a very, mistake we make is that because we are in a, in a very, what you call it, in a very, how many of you have been on movie sets before here? No, with your hand, can't your hands. You know, because of how we live, and you know, one, one of the things we're, we're, we're acting is that we look very unserious. You know how it is in movie sets. People are walking up and down. People are, let me share this experience with you. So I was going to preach for somebody. I was going to preach for a, a, a woman, a prophetess on the spin text. So I was shooting something somewhere around Nungwa. Then she says, hey, man of God, where are you? Remember to ask tonight's man? Oh, yes, man of, man of God, remember tonight's man? Where are you? I said, oh, I'm around Nungwa. Hey, I'm Nungwa. Ah, I'm also in Nungwa. Let, let, let me pass by and stop by. I forgot myself. And so I said, yes, yes, yes. And so she drives by set, and it was a scene in a campus film somewhere. somewhere. And these prophets get, you know those prophets that, that they wear long dresses to their land? She gets down, and she sees girls. And in her mind, is this my guest speaker for tonight's program? 
in this kind of environment. You know how it is on movie sets. People, she saw pe people wearing okay. Hey, someone, director, director, please, am I okay for this scene? I said, you are fine, my darling. The woman is like, oh God, what kind of mistake have I made? And his face is already on my poster. You know how you know kind of thing. <laughs> you know, and in her mind, these are people dressed to replicate a particular character. But if you're not in another world, you know how it feels like you feel like God, Sodom and Gomorrah. Here I am, God of fire from heaven. So I could see it in her face. Me to her, I said, God, what kind of mistake have I made? <laughs> you know, if this woman comes to this program now, who is at fault? But because of the kind of space we are in, we are just laughing, talking. The movie set is one of the most spiritually potent environments you can ever be in. I experienced the greatest transference of spirits and possession in the movie set. I say this with divine authority. The kinds of things that God has opened my eyes to see within the movie space. If you don't hear anything tonight, you hear it. better be careful of your food and your water. Who holds your handbag, your makeup kit, where you put your slippers? It's the most spiritually potent environment. Have you ever been on set and meet someone and they don't like you from the, from the first hello? Hello, they don't like you. There is a transaction that has occurred in the realms of the spirits. The anointing over your life has confronted a demonic force and says, this one is not part of our system. What is she doing here? You get to know, rehearse how to find five minutes on set and go to a corner and lilabada bakoto shatabada bakatabaya e patoko shatabaya mira you okay? Oh, I'm fine. Is it time for our sin? You get to know if there's any way you ought to stay utmostly sensitive. It's on set. I am telling you by authority. People have come into associations on sets that ruin their lives and their careers. Men, young men have met women on set that they slept with that killed stardom and swallowed glories over their heads. Young girls have met influential figures on set, executive producers or whatever it is that they connected to, I will help you. And that was the end in the spiritual realm. Transactions that silence destinies. So every time you are on set, remind yourself. So, <laughs> I won't call her name because she was supposed to be here, but she's not here today. She's, she's an actress and I call her my daughter. She was on set somewhere about last month and I went by the set. And then as I was leaving, God said, tell her. Refer next morning when she gets on set, she put her hand on the ground and say, I take dominion over this ground. She said, Father, I said, I said, do it when everybody can see you. I said, don't be shy. I said, daughter, do it. She said, why? I said, there are things that are confronting you. This, what you are playing is perhaps one of your biggest lead characters in life. You can't be, you can't be ashamed about your source of utterance. The next day she came on and said, she said, Father, then I said, yes, I've done it. I said, how are things now? She says, I feel at a particular ease. I said, your declaration is to say, if you have any fight against me, take it against my father. <laughs> so hear me tonight. I want, I want my brother to share very practical. Me, and maybe I'm too, I'm too scripture, scripture, rema, rema. Rem, I want him to sell, share very practical. I mean, you hear from a man who has not, maybe, maybe I'm because I'm not an actor. Me, I asked some weird, weird, crazy, imbecile, two sins, mad, crazy professor, one sin. I had, a, I had stupid, stupid, <laughs> crazy things. To so hear from a man who has lived in the details of the process. So hear me. I want to I end this before he speaks and I'll come back. Hear me. As I speak to you now, I'm not speaking to who will be actors, upcomers. I'm speaking to the seeds of destiny on the inside of you. Two things will happen tonight after my brother speaks. We're going to be praying for everyone here. That tonight by this singular encounter, if there's any grace that we carry, I'm speaking prophetically as to, even if I haven't 
Mika, where I've been to cry is small. The nations of the world that his legs have stepped into. The influence over his life that did not come as a gift from man, but came from divine encounter. Whatever grace God has deposited, the cry of my spirit is that God lifts up young men, young women in the industry who can stand and boldly hit their chest and say, it's not that man did it, but as for this one, is that the workings and the hand of God, that no man can stand tomorrow and claim credit for what God did in your life. And God has put you in a place where it seems so difficult. Yes, it's so difficult because of what you carry. There is something on your inside that destiny wants to break out. There is something that you carry and the enemy knows that if we don't stop her now if we don't silence her now if she can cross 2022 for some of you if she can step into 2023 if she doesn't give up if she doesn't quit something is breaking out out of your life I prophesy with my eyes open let a generation arise from tonight let a generation arise from tonight let grace be poured out like a river all over your life. Receive the anointing, the giftings to make your name heard for influence, for greatness in the name of Jesus. Hear me. So listen. In summary, in summary do this and hear me well as believer in the system you've got to be arrogant you've got to be arrogant about what you stand for for many of you the reason why the process has delayed is that you are hiding behind being moralistic you don't want people to know so they won't feel I'm too creepy I'm too church if you are going to be separated from that system, you have to be arrogant about what you believe in. There were people I unfollowed from Instagram. When I started my journey, I said, Sister, if you are not the problem. I am the problem. Me here, I know myself. I beg you. You are good. But I cannot do morning devotion. Turn around and see you shaking what you shake. It's for my own good and my sanity. You are okay. I am not okay. Man, know thyself. There were people I unfollowed. There were people I disconnected from. When I not mean, I don't mean enmity. I just withdrew. There were contacts that left my phone. I defined my stand. People ought to know what you represent. It's on the pedestal of you standing, taking that stand that God brings that glory. So that you are not like Esther. That you have a crown but haven't found the essence for the crown. How many of you know that Esther had the crown? But didn't know what the crown was for. Until Mordecai refused to bow to Haman. And Esther was now telling Mordecai that, ah, you know, Mordecai says go to the king. Esther said, I can't go to the king. Mordecai says, don't think that you'll be safe. Who knows whether you are coming to the kingdom for such a time as this. Esther now realized, ah, that means there's, there's something for my... She says, okay, you know what? I am my maid to go and fast. Then she realized that purpose is not just what you live for. Purpose is what you are willing to die for. She says, if I perish, I perish. There is an arrogance of faith needed to confront the system. Many of you have shied away for too long. You are, in, you are going on set. You are in a circle. People are talking about all kinds of profanity. And you too, you won't talk. But you are there saying. <laughs> they say something very profane. Describing something. You too, you won't talk something. You do like you are not here. But then. <laughs> and ah, have you not experienced something? <laughs> we condone. And so what are you doing? You are sucked into the system and to lily liver to declare. It's on the pedestal. Let me tell you something. There's an end time anointing. 
Watch this. It's an end time anointing that has left Bible school. It has left clergy. You guys are even lucky. This is my gene is not ripped enough. On a very good day. It has left the seminary. It's an end time anointing that God is pouring upon seemingly ordinary people. God wants to raise voices. How many of you know right now that if Cristiano Ronaldo tweets Jesus is Lord, he has more, if Nicki Minaj tweets Jesus is Lord, he has more impact than the Pope tweeting Jesus is Lord. How many of you know that the internet will shut down? If Nicki Minaj tweets Jesus is Lord, the internet will shut down. God is looking to raise voices. Voices in the spheres of influence that breaks outside regular church. The beauty of your stardom, the glory of your stardom, is that when you sway on the red carpet, no man can point his hand and link you to one married man somebody who bought you a car or a house. That when you sway on the red carpet and look at you, the, uh, the, 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 the submission of your life evokes the glory and the grace of God. God is looking for entire life. Even when you're on set, your hands are healing the sick. Your voice is, is blessing people and you are being lifted in the eyes of men. There's an end time anointing coming upon a generation. The good news is you are part of that generation. So you cannot be, you cannot be timid, that's the word, about your God. Timid. Because you are facing an industry that says, this must be done this way, that must be done this way. In, in that light, you cannot bow to pressure. Hey, hear me. If all you can afford is your corn roll, my sister, do your corn roll. If it's your black skirt, wash it, iron it, wear your black skirt. And in fact, you know one thing I've noticed? How many of you noticed this? You don't have, oh, you don't have enough. People will envy you thinking that you have. Have you, have you, have you experienced that? You, you are somewhere managing yourself, oh. You are somewhere, but your presence, oh, my dad, will put your hands on this sin. They don't know, they don't know that there is something called grace. I don't have what you have. But grace makes that when you see me, the little I have, there is something about the way I walk, the way I throw my hands. My sister, then, then please, please, take two minutes and imagine when God is done with you. If they are envying you now, imagine when you have gone through your process. When God is done with you, now you are like a bride that they have, they have done only one brow. They have not done the second brow. Imagine, imagine when God is done with your contour. When God is done with your highlighting. Imagine when, imagine when God has finished my face beat. I prophesy over somebody's life. By this time next year, by this time in the next season of your life uh, yeah, 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 my other house. they that said who are you when they see you may they see glory may they see your star so carry yourself with pride be arrogant about your faith and know that God put you here for a reason. I want to, what's the time? Seven thirty. I want to, anyway. every time when I pray, the Lord taught me this, I'll put my hands on my tummy. Because I see destiny like pregnancy. I see destiny like pregnancy. Some people are long overdue. Something should have broken out for you five years ago, but something delayed your season. So I see it like pregnancy. For me, ministries like a baby, I put my hand here. Because I feel, I see that God is responsible for the planting of the seed. But man's responsibility is the delivery. Is the delivery. Ask for God. You see, many of us will be shocked on judgment day. Me, I've rehearsed it in my head. 
Many of you think judgment day will be only about line up here. You stole 50 CDs. Good. You'll be shocked. It won't only be about right or wrong. You know what it will be about? It will be about books which authors never wrote. Songs which some lips never sang. Giftings that God put in your hand that you never used. Some people, God has marked 50 countries that people never grew into their fullness. Because think about it. If God says, before I formed the and that means God made an investment in you. Do you know, can I tell you, do you know who, do you know who sin, sin harms? Sin doesn't harm God though. When God says don't sin, God is not reduced by sin. It's you. It's your shaping into character and growing into maturity. Because there are things you will never inherit until you mature. So the greatest effect of sin is not on God, it's on you. It doesn't reduce God one bit. He says, even if you will not praise me, I'll raise up stones. So the greatest effect of sin is on us. As it shapes our thinking, the guilt it brings, the shame, how it disconnects us from God's presence, not on God. So judgment day, the real crux of judgment day is men appearing with the investments God made in them that died dormant. Preachers who never hold the microphone but end up in a brothel. Men raised up to be greatest voices that end up as drunks. Men raised up as influence in media and other spheres of life that never one day had the audacity to step into all that God called them to be. So every time I pray, I put my hand on my belly. I say, God, everything you have put in me, I will die empty. Nothing will go unused. Nations, I've been talking about these nations ever before I got my first visa. Nations will hear my name. Kapo, Shata, Inkapa, Ilabaku, Shateha, Ebeakata. So hear me, I want to conclude with this. So what, what does the anointing do for you as a believer here? Watch this now. What does the anointing do for you? If I understand the language of the industry, I have talent. I'm developing my talent. Spend time, read books. Young people, Google is not only for, or Instagram, or your phone is not only for Instagram and for blogs. Go to Google. There are books you can read on acting, developing your talent acting for directors spend time at night after the show. one chapter two pages make notes they are on the end. You, you must develop yourself that's the language but the question is what is the utterance what is the what is the use of the anointing what is the use of me being a believer now watch this god has given you a promise and put you in a process the anointing, watch this now. The anointing creates opportunities for you in a system that is designed to deny you opportunities. The anointing creates opportunities for you in a system designed to deny you opportunities. That's why if you are a believer in this industry, you must know how to speak in tongues. It is your greatest weapon and your greatest advantage. Because can I ask you a question now? How many of you can tell me what is going to happen by October 10th next month? Where would you be? Can you tell me for real? How many of you can tell me where you'll be by December 10th? This time December 10th, can you tell me? None of us can tell in graphic details what will happen in the next four weeks. But by the agency of the spiritual language, I can code and release codes into the atmosphere that orchestrates my path for my arrival through life. By the potency and the agency of the Holy Ghost, I can orchestrate paths for my career that even in a system that denies me opportunities. Let me, let me end with this. Come, come to me, my brother. Come. I want to use you. Come. Come. I, I learned something profound from the blessed. How many of you listen to Apostle Joshua Selman? I learned something from him that for a season of my life became a hallmark for me. He says, he describes God's mercy as this. I want you to listen to me carefully. He says, God's mercy is not just something that pours out when you've done something wrong. He says, God's mercy is an attribute of God. 
the way I smile, that's the way. It's an attribute of God's character. He says, God's message is described as this. If this man is here, and by the part of his destiny, there's a door here that he's supposed to walk into before he walks into the fullness of his purpose. By a stroke of his bad choices, bad decisions, human influences, what? He makes a mistake and turns around and loses his path and does not walk through that door. Mercy is the fact that God will move the door from here and bring it here. Go and sit down. Mercy is the fact that there's a script somebody is thinking about somewhere about to write. And mercy is the fact that as the script is being written, something about your physical attributes fits into a particular character. And I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you something to excite you. I am telling you something I have seen in operation in the lives of men. I wish Rosalind Kisa was here when we're, when we're casting for Inside Out. She's my most recent example. I wish Rosalind was here. I wish Rosalind was here. There was an argument. How many of you know? See, actors, you got to see this why you need to pray in tongues. How many of you know? And, and my brother will know this. Do you know that when we cast, it's such a it's it's a very it's a very strange atmosphere when we are casting. I said, hey, hey, what this what about um, this character, Mary? What do you think about Janet? Ah, Janet dear. Somebody can say something in two seconds to kill you from that role. Somebody will say, ah, my last job with that girl. Very saucy girl. You know the respect, crowd. That girl. You want Charlie go delay yourself. In two minutes, you are done. The police says, ah, me, I don't want any problem. I don't want anybody. Ah, that girl, very troublesome girl. Oh. In two minutes. Okay, okay. And what about him? Um, Matter, hey, matter be good, crap. And maybe Janet did not do anything. So it means that before your phone rings to say we have a job, there are certain deliberations that have gone on behind the scene. That if mercy is not speaking for you, because people try to pull all kinds of influences together, so you don't know what has happened. You are there six months, your phone is not ringing, you are thinking, ah. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? So that's why it's necessary for the believer to engage a superior authority over the affairs. When we're doing that cast, oh, I, we're online, but I have to say this anyhow. She's my sister. She knows I love her, so she, she knows that. They said, ah, the character should be somebody sexy, heaps past, you know. Rosalind, ah, he can overlash at the The original character we had in mind, you know, should be someone, you know. Guess what happened? Let me cut the long story short. When we settled on Rosalind, guess what happened? I love the mercy and the favor of God. When we settled on Rosalind, they called the costumer. Say, you need to change the costumes. Make costumes that will fit Rosalind's personality. Listen, I, I, I'm speaking to two people tonight. May the rules change for your sake. May men extend boundaries to accommodate you. By the end of the several meetings, we all agreed to do what? change the entire character to suit you. That's all. They said, don't worry. Don't worry. Change. Let, instead of forcing her to wear tight stuff, wear her free flow. In fact, can I tell you we went to go and look at Auntie Shalashi Bawale's costumes from King of Boys and say, make it this. Make, let her just wear free flowing gowns. That's what we did. We changed the entire character to suit one woman. Because heaven had pointed a finger and said, it is my set time to favor. So you got to know, as a believer, how to engage superior authority. Beyond your talent, your skill. You know that, yes. So you can't be timid in the industry. You can't be lily livered. You can't be shy. Stand your ground. 
turn away from all the pressure, all the distractions, and say, God is my help. And if there's anything I have seen in my life, that I've seen God help men. I said, I have seen God help men. Lastly, in that system, there's gossip, there's backbiting, witchcraft, there's the deepest level of betrayal. You've not seen betrayal, though. You are with somebody now. Says that rule. Me, God forbid, I can never accept that rule. That rule. Premium. Let's go home. As soon as you get home, the same person would turn around and go back to the director and say, ah, please give me the rule. That girl, she didn't feel herself, Papa. I beg me, I go. You will be, you, in fact, you'll be at home seeing their status. Hey, Ajua. Did you not tell me that your own place is Oh, me, as for me, they called me back. Oh. You experience the deepest level of betrayals. The deeper, in fact, you hear something said about you, you wonder, ah, nah, me, did I do it in my dream or? So guess what? Guess what? You must, and I encourage this for every, if you don't have it now, as you leave home tonight, now do it. All of you here must have a prayer altar. All of you here must have a prayer altar. Put your dreams in an envelope. Are you getting me? Write them down. Find a corner of your room. Create a prayer that once your knees hit the ground there, even if it's 10 minutes, it's your, it, let me, God is everywhere, but God must meet a man somewhere. It's your point of engagement that when, listen, that when God sees my daughter's knees hit the ground, he knows, ah, Semaba, something has to shift tonight. Find a prayer altar. Because the people you are contending with, they have where they go. Find a prayer altar in your room, in a space. Find, if you can't have space, then find a designated time for prayer. Where you sit, there might be nothing physically, but when you sit there, every sensibility in you tells you it's time to pray. I come back, I want my brother to speak, but I pray for you tonight. And after tonight, for the next one hour, let someone live here with an outpouring of grace. Everyone here will be anointed tonight. And I open my eyes and I say this from this room tonight. I want to see men in the next one year, two years. I want to see men who will stand in rooms of influence from this room tonight. I look forward to celebrating grace, glory in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, no destiny will fail. No destiny will fall to the ground. Somebody shouted, I receive it. May the Lord bless you. Please don't leave. My brother will speak and share his thoughts and his experiences. I want to come back. I'll pray with all of you. If you want to speak to me one on one, I'll speak to everybody one on one tonight. I'll pray with you. My spirit is stirred up that God's name be lifted in your lives and that you will see the tangible fruits of everything I'm sharing with you tonight. God bless you. Come here, please rise to your feet. Come on, everybody, with a shout of praise. Help me receive. You call him Sniper D, I call him the son of Elohim. Prince David Ose.
bless your holy name for you are God and you are God all by yourself. Once have you spoken, twice have we heard that all power belongs to you. We give you praise for the gift of life. We thank you for the life of Pascal Amanfo. We thank you for the life of people like Christ. We thank you for the opportunity to be alive this moment. Father, we are nothing without you. Therefore, we decrease so that you will increase in our face in the name of Jesus. Let today be a night of an encounter. Let it not just be a normal meeting. Speak through me. Affect lives. Affect destinies. Use me as a tool of honor to glorify your name and to bless you for whom you are and what you represent in our life. We silence every accuser. We silence every evil voice. Every contrary spirit, we silence. We take dominion over the territories, over the convicts in the name of Jesus. And we declare that God alone will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Since we are in church, I'll do small church things, okay? But I'll be myself. I always love to be myself because um, there can't be two of me. When you try to adopt another personality, what you are telling God is God did not create you right. Everybody is unique in its own way. That is how God created us. You find your uniqueness and you excel. I'm pleased to be here this evening. Pascal is a brother. He knows the genesis of the man standing here. I'm a living testimony. I'm the guy... <laughs> I'm the guy who will never take no. I'm the guy you cannot silence. I'm the guy you cannot stop. I'm a moving train. I might not look like it, but I'm very stubborn. Stubborn for a good cause. And that is the spirit I will want you all to inculcate this evening. Never say no. No retreat, no surrender. Okay, so the topic that we are dealing with is gifted, but giving up. Gifted. When they say someone is gifted, what does it mean? It means someone who is talented, someone who is endowed, someone that things come to naturally. You don't have to struggle. It's what God has given you. Someone who has the capacity to excel. You know, that is someone who is gifted. Most often, every one of us has something that God gave us when we came on this earth. A lot of people spend time finding it until they die. Some people find it early. They get frustrated along the way because they don't have control. And they don't know who they are and whose they are. So, like, I have a talent. I can sing. For every gifting and every talent, there's a waiting period. There is that time that you separate yourself, that you isolate yourself, and deal with your demons before you adore yourself. You see, for my story, as it applies to the movie industry, the conversation might be a bit personal because I'm going to tell you my life testimony and my life dealings that has brought me here. You see, if you are gifted and if you are talented and you are lucky enough to find it, there's no other way. It's either you are for Christ or you are for other people. That's how the world is. It's either it's Satan doing it or it's God doing it. And God will always be glorified. In my case, you know, I didn't know what I would become. But when I was young, from seven years old, I adopted the spirit of prayer. I could pray and everybody would be saying, shut up, I don't bump out to my shut up. I didn't know what it was, but I had probably seen an elderly person done it. And I just, you know, got that interest, enthusiasm to be praying. So when I discovered, you know, greatness is such that you can feel it. You know you are different. When people are playing this way, you are playing that way. And people don't get it like, who you two know? And I like it when they say the two no, because to some extent, it's the two no that has brought me here. If it wasn't for the two no, I wouldn't be here. Some way, some way, they made me, they made me realize who I am. Well, you know, everybody goes this way, then I stand here. Ah, now, who's your uncle for? You see the people are standing there. Why don't you go? I said, no, I want to stay here. No, it's, it's, it's a way of developing your mindset. Isolation is a gift. If you can't stay alone. If you can't make yourself happy, if you can't lock yourself in a room all by yourself and look up to God and say, Lord, help me. I come from a very humble background. A background where you can't say there's an uncle that you run to when there's a problem. There's no uncle. There's no uncle. It's your mom, your dad. 
If mom doesn't have it, dad doesn't have it, then you're on your own. Do you understand? So that is how I grew up. I grew up the tough way. So every time people are chasing girls, my cousins are, hmm, no, I wasn't part of it. So I was always in some corner, probably reading a book, first aid, reading something. I said to myself, if I'm going to make it, I see a lot of rich kids. Their parents already have money. So the least they can do is to try. Me, there's nothing in the coffers. Like, you know, I, I would say maybe I was born with a plastic stick. Not even a golden spoon, plastic. So now, what are you, what are you going to do with a plastic? You need to invent your own. So I look at these rich kids and I go like, okay, they are rich. I don't have money. My parents are not rich. So if I'm intelligent, then I can meet them. It's all about what I can give. What can you offer? So I decided to pay attention to the books. Whilst I was doing the books, I was praying. I didn't know what I would become, but I was praying. I kept praying, and the irony of it is I kept facing a lot of adversity. All my siblings, everything they do is okay. Only me, if I do, oh, no, no, out there. And I was the one they were beating most. Every time people lie, somebody went, still or misbehave, they say it's me. I wasn't even there. So at a point, I thought everybody hated me. Then I said, no. This is the beginning. This shows there's more to me than I, I think. Because we are like seven people, five boys, two girls. Why is it that it's only me? Every time it's me. So I started praying. I started praying. When I completed SS, I will, um, nobody sent me. I will go to Achimota Forest. I will pay for the tour. I will go in there. From left to right. Just praying, 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 praying. Ask me what I was praying for. There was nothing wrong with me. I was praying ahead of time. I was praying into today. That is why someone like me, when you come fighting me, you are wasting your time. In my weakest moments, you can't. Because I have prayed. I have, I have dedicated, my, dedicated myself so much to prayer that one day I traveled and my father went to sleep on my bed. You see the portion of my bed that I sleep on. Whoever sleeps there, God just opened their eyes and they start seeing stuff. So, that, is, that is how serious it is. And for you to excel in this industry that we are, show business is show business. And that is what a lot of Christians don't understand. It's a show and it's business. If you're a Christian and you want to act all sanctimonious, we, we educate people, we entertain people, we mirror society. But what we do is not who we are. If you don't get that distinction of I'm an actor, I'm going to act. When they say cut, that's it. If you don't have that distinction, you're going to get into trouble. So I got into this movie thing and um, it was like all hell has broken loose. They didn't want me in. And uh, as Pascal was saying, my first major role, I mean I got into the movie industry at a time where if you are black, you can't play a lead role. It was always fair people. You see that Majid, or Van Vika, Omar Sharif, you have to be fair. So, I met John, and I and John did a series titled About to Wed. I don't know if any of you remember it. Long time ago, 2008. So, when we did that series, it was a Nigerian production. So, they got to see us. They started inviting us to Nigeria. But for Ghana here, what gave me the break was a movie titled In the Eyes of My Husband. Now, I had completed Legon, and I was at home. I was at home minding my business. Then, because I've been going to auditions at Afrikiko, and the irony of it was, am I, am I bad looking? I would go to the audition. It was like there was a covering on my face. They never called me. They never called me to even hear my voice read. Let's hear, no. And I was always sitting in front. So it was Martha that noticed me. So Martha was like, ah, who is this nice guy? That's how we became. She came to me, Martha, Gloria. We became friends. But still, they were not allowing me to read. So if they don't allow me to read, how can they know even if I have a voice or... No, no, no. So all those times I go to the audition, they don't pick me. They don't even... Whatever. But what happened was they noticed me. Because I was always sitting in the front. They noticed me. So here I was at completed school done my national service and I was looking for what next. I wanted to travel out and bye-bye. So I got a call. You see, when the grace and the favor of God falls upon you, 
when decisions are being made, it will go in your favor. They didn't know my name. So the guy, the production manager said they were doing a movie. They've casted who they want to cast. Now they were on set and the guy could not deliver. Mind you, the people who called me had not heard me speak. They don't know who I am. They just know I'm a student in Legon. Now they were on set. The guy couldn't deliver. Then somebody said, I, I know a guy who has a similar build. He's a Legon student. I, I see him come to the audition. He sits in front. Does anybody have his number? Then I think it was Juliet Ibrahim or somebody said, so he, she knows somebody that knows somebody. So they called me finally. When they called me, the guy said, oh, is this Prince? I said, yes. He said, um, can you come to Jowlu right now? I said, what's going on there? He said, oh, I want you to come and play Nadia's boyfriend. I said, huh? <laughs> because, because Nadia was my mate in Legon, but Nadia's boyfriend, just like that. So I was like, ah, are you sure? He said, now, now, now. I said, oh, like now, like give me some time. I said, no, come now. So I had a friend, we pack our stuff. It was more like my, my uh, cheerleader. Even when I'm doing wrong, he said it's good. He saw, so he was like, let's go, let's go, let's go. I said about Nadia's boyfriend, okay. So we got to our free, um, Jowulu. When we got there, I saw all the faces, you know, the old faces, big time people. Then I said to myself, if I get the opportunity, I will blow. Whilst I was saying that, I was praying. I was praying. Then the guy acting, playing the role was there. The set, they were filming. And they told the director, Daniel, like, oh, this is the guy. He looked at me and said, oh, give him the script. They gave me a very big script. I had not seen the script before. So they said, oh, look at it and we'll shoot very soon. Now, let me tell you something. Pascal said, the movie industry, spiritually, is very potent. Believe it. It's not a joke. Before I left my house, because I always do it, it's like a tradition, I said, Heavenly Father, let your favor and your presence go with me. When I show up there, let everybody love me. Favor, acceptance. But there was one particular girl who didn't like me. For whatever reason, my presence was just annoying her. And I, it wasn't like I was rushing. I was very humble because that was the first time I was coming in their midst. So they gave me costume. Hmm. When I wore the costume, when I was reading my lines, wearing my own outfit, I got it right. Everything was okay. As soon as the costume, gave me the costume. I started sweating. I started panicking. So now I was jittery. Obviously, acting is a job that comes with confidence. If you don't have confidence, obviously, your nightmare will not be good. So they called me to come on set. And um, they said, read. I was reading. I was fumbling. It's like the whole atmosphere has been dominated with some bad energy. So the guy was like, should we give him more time? We don't have time. So then I said, oh, one minute. So I went to the washroom. Took off their shirts. Ma kada basuki andibusa. Li kapala bosa de. I will play this role and nobody will play it. If I don't play it, no one will play it. So after I dealt with that, then I came on the set. Then I wasn't smiling. So I came. Whilst we were filming, I was spiritually awake. Now we finished the first scene. That was it. Everybody started talking. Oh, there's this guy from Legon. There's this guy. That is what has brought me here today. So, so if, if I wasn't praying, if I wasn't certain, that time I didn't even know any girl. You, a lot of you see me and say I'm the worst humanizer. As of that time, I hadn't even had sex before. I did, so, so it's, it's funny how people judge people. As I really said, I said, what you do is not who you are. If someone is a prostitute, and the person tells you she's a prostitute, then she's not a prostitute. The real prostitute, they don't tell you because it's a job. Do you understand? So people see physical appearance and they judge people and they, they feel like, oh, they are the most righteous people. No, no, you don't do that. So when you have a gift, you need to go into that waiting period where you invest into prayers. You invest into your craft. Pascal can give you the lead role if favor falls upon you. If you can't act, you can't act. If you are not prepared, I always tell people, be ready so you don't have to be ready. You walk around looking for opportunities. As soon as it knocks on your door, you enter. 
Opportunity doesn't open up to you and say, oh, I'm going to consult and come back. No. That's not how the world is. The Bible says, my, my people are not wise because the people of the world are wiser. They are very smart. You can't be in the movie industry. I've been there for 17 years and counting. When I speak, it's headline. But I stay in some corner. It's because I spend time on the face of God. At a point, I noticed there was no way out. It's all about God. It's God. There's no way out. Nobody can help you. Some people looked into my face and told me, you, you can't be a star. <laughs> Where are you coming from? Because they slept. Say they slept. And when they woke up, I was a star. And, and these are the king makers. These are the people who determine who is a star, who will play what role. Now, let me tell you what's shocking. We call forth the roles to come to us. Now, now, I don't even worry about roles. When they call me, I say I'm busy because I'm doing other things. But back then, you call the role. Anywhere they are making a decision, anywhere they are casting, let it be me, Prince David of Sight. I protect my face unto them. They will not see anyone but me. They will not, see. you pray, you charge the whole place. Now, movies that you are not even part, movies that they never discussed about you, you just be there, so Prince, are you available? Uh, what's going on? Oh, we were looking to do a movie with you. But if you are busy, work on your terms. So how many days can you give us? That is when grace is talking. And it doesn't come just like that. You have to invest in prayers. There's no way out. I've been on sets where, you know, a brother of mine felt like, okay, he, he's a star. And it's sad. Pascal was saying something that you might be on a location and you have to go here so you excel. But some way, someone, you turn around. If it doesn't take the grace of God, that's it for you. We were filming on a set. It was a Christian movie. So ideally, if you are doing a Christian movie, as a rational human being, you need to be spiritually sound. You need to pay attention because you are impacting into people. And the movie is going to, is going to impact into the lives of people. It's going to be a representation of God. Now, this guy decided he was a star. So... As for him, he can sleep with anybody, do anything anyhow. We're on the set. And it's sad how the career ended. So all I had was, oh, there was a bodyguard who had taken some girl in. And because he was a bigger star, he walked in there, took the girl from the guy and whatever, whatever. So after he did whatever, the girl said, so we said, no, no, no. Like, that's it. You've gotten what you wanted. You wanted to, you've gotten it. This guy became sick started vomiting started coughing so i and my brother were on the set we held us then we started praying father for whatever reason whatever exchange has gone on in the realms of the spirit whatever deposit has gone into this guy's life by fire by thunder let there be a release he vomited everything after that night that was it he struggled even rose that day they would give to they would rather give it to a stranger he struggled and struggled and that was it he had to look for something else to do so you, you don't play in this area if it is something you want to do if you have talent you have gifting don't let anybody deceive you you are not the only one who is handsome you are not the only one who is tall you are not the only one who can speak good english you are not the only one who is pretty it is grace if you don't find your way in god you'll be lost sometimes you are frustrated because you see somebody post a picture but if you know who you are and you know who you are you celebrate with people you don't worry you know your time will come but people even live this kind of deceptive life they will go somewhere they'll post a picture and you will be in your house for all you know they don't even have 100 cities in their pockets they live by grace here you are having headache as a child of god and i call it witchcraft why should somebody's business be your business you see something on social media in your stomach. Hey, so this guy has traveled again. Hey, 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 he's traveled again. And me, I don't even have one visa. And you call yourself a Christian. You see your fellow beautiful girl post a nice picture. Say, sister, you are looking beautiful. You won't even like it. You pass. And go and like a comedian who is fooling. Oh, no. how, how do you justify your Christianity? You see a brother looking. Oh, brother, you are looking good. God is good. God is blessing you. I'll call you too. No, no, no. Face it. 
And that is what fights against us. We don't love each other. We don't appreciate each other. Even in the church, it happens. They call somebody to come and sing worship. The presence of God is so mighty. Then somebody is there putting his feet on the ground. Let him make a mistake. Let something go wrong. Why? How do you harness your gifting and your blessing when you are so full of bitterness? I have been to a church where like the general of is like, oh, this young one's coming up. Let's give them the podium. Let's see what the future holds. And somebody is sitting there, a, another pastor sitting there and his feet is on the ground. Let this guy fumble. Let this guy make a mistake. So, <clears throat> sometimes when I think of it, I said, oh, we Christians, we are our own woes. Pascal did God of Africa. Beautiful movie. They premiered in my church. I was there. The presence of God fell mightily. This was a movie. This, this was a movie. I'm not easily convinced, oh. No, 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 no. I'm very tough here. You can't easily please me. No, no, no. But for me to be in that church and felt the presence of God so strong in a movie, it wasn't like anybody was talking. It was the movie. That should tell you, you carry power, you carry potential. And as you follow this great man of God, the impartation will be big. But before then, work on yourself. Spend time to know your God. Spend time to know God. Know your gifts. Know what you are capable of. Work on it. If you want to act, read books. Learn. It's enough of TikTok videos. It will help some people. But if you identify your destiny, you identify who you are. Some people don't understand. Sometimes I go off, like maybe weeks, I won't post anything, you don't see me, then go like, oh, um, maybe things are not going well for Prince. You lie. That is when things are going well for me. Because I'm in some corner in isolation and I'm doing stuff. It's not everything I do that I'll put on social media. No. And when you do that, you save yourself a lot of trouble. Because you can post a, a, t -sh a, a picture of you wearing a t-shirt. We go to programs, people have designers that design their red carpet, everything. I might just come with a white t-shirt. As soon as I show up, hey, please, hey, would you be queen? Would you? It's just a white t-shirt. When the glory of God falls upon you, even when you wear rags, you see, you don't know who you are, you don't know what you carry. I don't know if you've experienced this before. You see people who are well to do, even celebrities. You meet them. But they're uncomfortable around you. But you are nobody. You are just coming up. You are nobody. But they can't stand you. That should tell you you have something in your inside. And if you have something in your inside, you don't sit down. You open your mouth and speak into your future. You pray. You, you, you proclaim the goodness of God. You groan. You isolate yourself. Sometimes it's okay. They call you out. It's not every time they call you out that you show no, everywhere you are, this party you are there, you are here. How do you add value to yourself? Give them the gift of missing you. Yes, give them the gift of missing you. Sometimes they don't see you, then they start talking, where is he, where is he, then you show. But not everywhere. There are certain roles, unfortunately for some of us, when we started, we didn't get anybody to mentor us, we didn't get anybody to speak to us like I'm speaking to you. Pascal wasn't there. At that time, for us to be doing this, now you have the opportunity. So you don't make the same mistakes we did. There are certain scripts when you call me, if I look, I'm like, oh, I can't do it. Because you add value and substance to yourself. You don't have to do a thousand movies before you become a star. No. You don't need that. You don't need that. Once you carry the presence of God, people watch me in their homes and they fall in love. They don't know me. They've never met me. People see me and they're screaming. You think it's normal? It's because there's something in the inside and it was activated through prayer. Sometimes I go to premieres and programs. I sit in my car. When you came, I asked you if you were waiting for me. Then I rode up. I was praying. I don't just show. So when I go to places and people all over me, people don't understand. You need to carry presence as a child of God. I was in an office at a Salam Down. We we're having a meeting. All I heard was, hey, me bani who, me bani who, me bani who. Like somebody's child was. I just, I broke protocol. There were people there. On a normal day, who will expect? Kadaba, I refuse every spirit of death. The child will not die in the name of Jesus. Receive life. I, then everybody was like, hey, sniper. <laughs> the name is a priest. He said, sniper. You know, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. 
we are not ashamed if you check my social media page there is no time I don't give gratitude to God because some of us where we are coming from today I can take a pen I will write a letter give it to someone the person will go to the embassy they will give visa because of my influence you think it's a joke it's God it is God a lot of people wrote me off and now when some of them see me they can't come close but it's not my fault no 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 so there's something deposited in the inside of you everybody has a gift in stop chasing shadows stop trying to be who you are not and stop trying to be somebody be you it's only you that can be you if you find out who you are the story of David and Goliath David was someone that people didn't regard because obviously he was a boy who was in a bush taking care of the lamb and that is what I can identify with I operate under the Davidic anointing I'm not perfect but I serve God to attain perfection if you are looking for perfection it doesn't exist not on this earth it is only God that is perfect a lot of you tend to sideline yourself reject yourself look down on yourself because you've seen because you've done this no believe in the God you serve know that God is ever merciful if something goes wrong do not sit down get up shake yourself plead the blood for mercy and move because a lot of Christians young ones you see the whole world is so much polluted right now that the slightest thing you fall into temptation everybody is give me give me give me give me give me it's all about transaction you want to be somebody's friend the first thing is how do you how do this friendship benefit me nobody wants to genuinely love someone nobody wants to genuinely show favor somebody buys you fried rice or food the next moment it's actually when are you visiting me when am i going to see you and it's crazy now i've adopted a strategy because the job that we do it attracts a lot of beautiful women to us and some of them are so beautiful that if it wasn't for the fear of god hmm. so now this is how it works when you make when you make friends with such people they are living in a different world what they want is your body but i wouldn't advise everybody to do that if you don't have the power and the mantle to do that as pascal already said flee delete block have your own peace when they call me in the morning Malabo, Sadaba, Libra, I'll pick the call. Libra. Okay, okay, you yeah, are praying. I'll call you back. They call me 12 midnight or 11. They want to start flirting. Ah, please. Every time I call you, you are praying. I'm praying. And it will interest you to know some of them have started praying. Some of them have started joining the prayer line because you call me in the morning. You want to send me a picture i am praying so that's how we are affecting them now because you can't just go on to people and say be born again blah, blah, blah. they won't even mind you you get close to them by being normal so they think oh it's an opportunity for them to flirt with you then in way they see that your ways are not what they thought then gradually they will conform they will accept you for who you are and to the glory of god a lot of people have come to the knowledge of christ through that so it's not just about when someone mounts the podium you can save lives differently and for me that's how it works they go hey please don't begin so bad when i'm just a prince baby so hey, every time a bumpire prince crown and mommy bumpire say you 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 use your influence and your power to inspire people people come on my page and sometimes i go off you can see me speaking in tongues and i post a video i don't care what you say because i'm living my life i don't care what you say whatever opinion you have about me is yours I won't challenge you. I can't convince you. You have your opinion. You're entitled to it. I'll live my life and glorify God. So David was someone nobody, you know, nobody looked. And for you to make your giftings come out great, you need to adopt a skill. Before now, I was praying. So why would I be stupid to become a star and I stop praying? And that is where a lot of people lose it. You go to church, you fast, you ask the man of God to pray for you, people to pray for you, then God blesses you. Then you know where to party on Saturday, Friday, Sunday, or mutual. You don't come to church. And when they call you, you think it's like they're bothering you. And that's how you lose it. That's how you lose it. Because those people you are contending with out there, 
They are going to Malams. They are going to Jujus. They are always pouring the oil on whatever altar they are pouring. Back in the day, some of them used to take our pictures to Malams. As soon as a new movie comes out, they take it to the Malamic altar. That these people, they are shining too much because they have their own people they want to shine. And me too, 12 midnight, I also stay awake. Anywhere, any deliberation, any meeting, wherever my name is being called, fire! I don't sleep. So if you won't sleep, me too, I won't sleep. And that is the world that we live in. Christians are so cold, everything you already bear. God has given you the power and authority. The Bible says, I wish above all things that we will prosper and be in good health. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snail of fire. The arrow shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night. You hit your chest and say, I'm a child of God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom? That is why I speak my mind. Because I know my backing. You think if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have been killed. You were here when we were doing the election. You saw how I was boisterous. Because I have a backing. When I speak, I go to the altar. I don't sleep. And that is the power and mandate I want you guys to have from today. Walk into a place, not feeling arrogant, but knowing who you are and knowing the coffin you have upon your head. A lot of people's gifting don't come to bear because there's a negative covering. There's a covering. You see that sugar daddy? He'll give you the money, but he'll take something from you. He'll take something from you. That's a transaction. You want it quick. You want to drive the cars because you see your friends driving it. There's nothing wrong. But people are wicked these days. People are not normal. They'll take something from you. I see a lot of young guys, when they see me traveling, when they see me looking nice, they assume it's something else. So some of them will dress, go to nice hotels where they know people's wife will come for lunch they do their beard very well they don't want to work what they want is people to pay and take care of them and sometimes when i meet them at such places i tell them there's no future to this the woman that you are going to sleep with you have no idea what she does you're a young man with a promising future with a destiny now there's an exchange if you have an intercourse with someone, it's give and take. What are you giving me? What am I giving you? It's what I have that I impact into you. If I have witchcraft, I impact into you. If you have sorrow, I take it. You see a lot of you get so depressed for no reason. You, you feel so rejected and dejected. It's because of the consummation. Who did you encounter? What did they give you? What did you give them? And that is what is killing a lot of people. So, the skill that got you there, keep doing it. If it's prayer, keep doing it. I'm not ashamed. Anywhere I show up, I will pray. I don't care who you are, I will pray. I will not be silent. When you get into an atmosphere where they try to shut you down, the only weapon you have is prayer. You open your mouth and speak. You don't let them silence you. Because truly, Nobody's going to hand anything over to you, sister, brother. It's war. We fight till we die. And we fight in the name of the Lord. They don't like us. They don't understand our ways because we don't do the things they do. But we always profess Christ. Sometimes they'll tell you, eh, where is your God? The God that... Let God be evident in your life. Let them see you and say, ah, this can only be God. That's what some of them say. We were in this country when I started doing the movie and it looks like they didn't want to accept me. Pascal was there. He saw everything. It, it was like everybody has come together like meeting that like this guy, no, won't let him shine. So you know what God will do? I started praying. I said, God, give me a break that everyone will see that it's your handwork and bring a distinction between the boys and the men. That was my prayer. I kept praying it. I kept fasting. I kept praying it. We were there. Then they said audition at um, Lintax Advertising. You see how the devil works? When they called me for the audition, I used to run an agency. So in my mind, I wanted my percentage. So you see, God will always go ahead of you. I told John Edinarte Majid them to go and audition. But if they get whatever it is, I'll take my cut. I was home. They had gone to audition. Then Ivan Kashiga called me again. He said, oh, Prince, 
go and audition. The people are ending it, blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, me, this white people, I don't want to So I put off my phone. And that time I was staying in a family house. You see stronghold? The stronghold is like, oh, this thing is at your fingertips, but you lose it. So I didn't mind them. I put off my phone. The next morning when I switched on the phone, the secretary was like, Ivan has been calling you. Go and audition. I said, oh, other people have auditioned. What is so special about me? So when I got in there, nonchalant attitude, I wasn't under pressure. I was just doing my thing. So before I left, the white man said, when you are chosen for this role, how much will you take? Then I was laughing. I said, oh, you white people, you come here every now and they say, want to do a movie. That was the beginning. So I went home. I was sitting down one day. Then I got a text message. Are you Prince David say? So I saw it was an American number. I was like, ah, me, I live in Kokomlemle. I've never traveled before. So what is this America number doing on my phone? Then the man said, I'll call you in a bit. So the person called, uh, we are doing a feature film. You are one of the cast we are considering. You people are five. And um, I don't know you, but it looks like you have what it takes to play the role. So we'll call you back. As soon as the guy said that, I went to some corner and started praying. Father, it will be me. It will be me, no one else. So long as he has called me, I don't care who he calls. So long as he has called me. And I shut up. I didn't tell anybody. Sometimes, if you have a gift, shut up. Shut it. Shut it. Oh, I've been giving the lead role. We'll be going on set on Friday, sister. They are not careful. In the night, they will switch. You'll be at home waiting for the call. You see the pictures on social media. They are shooting. Shut up. So I shut it in. I didn't tell nobody. We were there. I was praying. It was, a, it was like every minute I'm praying, it will be me. Any decision, it will be me. Even if I don't fit the role, it will be me. Now, the guy called again and said, we've been shortlisted to four people now. He mentioned some top names. I said, oh, thank you for giving me the information. I started praying. Then we became two. I don't know why this guy kept calling me. Then he said, we are going to have a board meeting and decide who plays a role. This is a Hollywood movie. If you know what to do, do it. That's what the white who doesn't believe in God told me. I said, okay. I started praying. I was there when they called and said, you've been selected, blah, blah, blah. Go to Linters, give your measurement. Me. When I was struggling with Ghana movie industry to be accepted. When I went to Lintax, took my passport there, got the visa, went on the set, then the devil said, we haven't started. Madabaha. Every day we go on the set to shoot. I wear the soldier uniform. I wear everything. Then the director will say, ah, don't worry, Prince. Let's go to the hotel. We'll do your scene tomorrow. They'll do other scenes. It went on for three days. And when you have giftings and talent, you need to pay a price. The altar will not burn without a sacrifice. So I locked myself. They were doing breakfast. I said, I'm not eating with you guys. I went in there. Lee Kadabaha. Every demon, territorial demon that have followed me from Ghana to this place. How can they put the camera on me and they tell me we'll shoot your scene tomorrow? So I was in there in the room, wore the soldier uniform, not knowing there was a guy that they brought from UK to understudy me. The guy was a Nigerian actor in London. So if anything goes wrong, he will play the role. I didn't know. But we're there. We're all in the hotel. Everything. So when I prayed the next morning and I came out, I wasn't smiling. So I told the director, I said, today we shoot my scene. Then he, he smiled. He said, we'll see how the weather goes. I said, oh, weather. <laughs> we don't know. The whole atmosphere will favor me. The earth will favor me. The ground I stand on will favor me. The wind, the atmosphere, you speak into it. It will favor you. So we got there. I wasn't laughing. First, action, take. The guy said, Prince, step out. Then the, he said, step in. He said, step out. The brother said, he has this star future like, like a hero. I said, yes. It's a hero. It's a hero. 
Now the guy that was troubling me on the set, I took him on. He had malaria. He shot on himself. So he told me, uh, you Africans, you are, you are monkeys and you are always saying there's God. The Bible is a literature. Then I went to him and said, God, show this man that you are God. The next morning he had malaria. He was shitting on himself on the set. He almost died. Then this guy called me. I was holding the New Testament, the small one. He called me and said, Prince, can you please borrow me your Bible? I want to read. And later on, he was telling me the story of the Bible. The white man he was telling me about God. You carry presence, you carry power. This evening, I'm going to tell you whatever it is you are doing. Find your feet in God. Have a personal relationship with God. Activate the power of God in you. Activate the gifting. Do not be ashamed. Sometimes set yourself apart. Put the food aside. Pray, groan, pray. Let them, because what, what is your testimony? You pray every day. You join all the prayer lines, yet you are struggling. You cannot be gifted and be frustrated. No, it's not possible. That's not God, what God wishes for you. You have to make an impact. You have to impact your generation. People should look at you and say, this is the doings of the Lord. And it is marvelous in our sight. Let's stand up and um, say a word of prayer. We are, we are going to pray for two minutes, just two minutes. You are saying, Heavenly Father, any gifting, any talent that you've endowed me with, that is being covered, I release fire. Let my gifting, let my talent be manifested in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice now and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, every gift in the name of Every Heavenly Father, we thank you. Jesus. We bless your holy name. We give you praise. I declare as a living testimony whatever spirit of greatness of influence of power you've invested in me I transfer to them in the name of Jesus, Jesus. let there be a great manifestation Jesus. Father let there be a great manifestation in the name of Jesus anyone oh God believe in you for greatness in the movie industry in whatever field to become a person of influence of power let their voice carry weight in the Jesus. name of Jesus when they speak, let it carry weight. Let their gifting, let their talent, let it manifest. Let it manifest in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, the grace of doing things easily, the grace of impact that you bestowed upon me by virtue of the anointing, I transfer to them in the name of Jesus. I transfer to them in the name of Jesus. Receive greatness. Receive it. Receive power. Receive it. Receive power. Receive it. Receive fire. Receive it. Strike fire. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. 
bless you, we thank you. For they will never be the same again. There shall be a performance in their life in the name of Jesus. There shall be physical manifestation. People will see them and say, this is the doings of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Celebrate, my brother. Hallelujah. I tell you what. I tell you what. I tell you what. Many times it's good when you hear these things from people who, are, who have lived it, who have walked that path and they can share these things with you. It would have been okay for me to just come and speak to you, but I wanted you to see a man who has walked that particular path. If I don't remember the story from me, at least I remember from the part of Angony of the Christ. I remember from that part. And that was, I don't know what year that film was. From all the way to now. I remember his first major lead role I saw. A film called Supremo. I've seen him achieve some certain milestones. And I know exactly where the source of his strength came from. I want to do one thing before we leave here tonight. But watch me. As he was speaking, the Lord said to me, Listen, every child of God here, he said it also. It's okay when you are in seasons when nobody knows you. Sometimes God deliberately hides you. Don't get frustrated with isolation. God will deliberately hide you. Like David in the backside of the desert. How many of you know when he killed the lion and the bear, nobody clapped for him? They thought that killing Goliath was the first time he had killed the land and the band. there was nobody to clap. Sometimes nobody will even see your talent. Nobody will acknowledge what you carry. It's okay. It's okay. Learn to find comfort and patience in seasons. So you don't frustrate the grace of God over your life. Or be forced to move ahead of God. It took me how many years? Your story can be shorter. But no matter what season you are in. Please, I beg you, patience, perseverance, trust God, and trust your process. Take it on me from me. Listen, your process is so tricky that the person sitting close to you, their process might be different. So if you judge your success based on another man's process, you will frustrate yourself. Oh, but we started together. No. Your sprint or your marathon might not be their sprint. It's okay for people to go ahead of you. But trust where God is taking you. Listen to what he says. While he was fighting for acceptance in Ghana, God brought a production from overseas. Jesus, let me say this last thing and then we'll pray. After the angel came to Mary and gave that huge prophecy that she'll have a child. How many of you know that for the next 30 years, Nothing is heard about the child Jesus. Except when he was 12 years old and was missing at the temple. For, it means for 30 years after Mary saw the angel, nothing was happening. There were people dying in Israel. Jesus didn't raise any dead. He didn't make any lame man walk. For 30 good years, Mary sat upon that prophecy. Learn to be patient in seasons where God is hiding you. So that when he shoots you up, we're about to pray now. And this is not ordinary prayers. It's an anointing that I want to be transmitted tonight, my God. As many who are watching online. Listen, listen. I didn't come just to speak to you. That's why I asked you from the beginning. Are you born again? Are you spirit filled? I didn't just come for actors tonight. I came for prophetesses. I came for people that will catch mantles that will run in the movie industry with mantles. I came for people that God will impact an anointing on. That my question tonight, can God trust you with fame? Can God trust you with fame? That when you walk on that red carpet, will the name of Jesus still be glorified? Can God trust you with greatness? Can God trust you with the world at your feet? Lift up your hands, everybody. Epaya called Sapasa. 
Ile kamana baroka pasotas. Felai pakapas. As a young lady watching online, I feel your legs shaking. Uh, is the power of God coming over you? Apia kapala. Let that anointing move from your legs to your hands, all over your body. I hear God say, It is your set time. It is your set time. It is your hour. Watch them. Somebody help me move this thing. There is fire in this place. Who says, who says the believer cannot prosper? Who says we will not rise? Ah, who says our eyes, our glory will not be seen? Uh, who says our heads will not be lifted up? No, we will not bow to man. We will not bow to the powers of darkness. I prophesy over your life. Ayaya Mahapakos. I see esters i see esters there's a kind of anointing i see that is dropping on people the anointing for kingship the anointing for queenship say listen listen whatever is fighting your glory from your roots or from your bloodline us as white people something corrosive is coming fighting you from your roots from your mother's house from your mother's bloodline contending for your destiny at the count of seven jesus Jesus. Ah, help him. Help him. Ah, who says our voices cannot be heard? Enough is enough. The child of God has been suppressed for too long. I see a generation rising. There's an anointing coming like a wind now. Take off the strings. Something is about to blow in this place. Listen, I want you to do one thing for me now. Lord, just drop this in my spirit. You are lifting up your right hand. You are saying, God. Oh. My fame is for your glory. Just my say that. My fame is for your glory. Say, I enter into agreement with you. I enter into agreement, agreement with you. Say, my fame. My fame is for your glory. For your glory. Say, I submit myself. I submit myself to the agenda. To the agenda of your kingdom. Of your kingdom. Say, my glory. My glory. My fame. My fame. My lifting. My lifting is for your glory. It's for your glory. Something is coming. Say, God. God. I enter, I enter into agreement, into agreement with, the host, with the host of heaven. Of heaven. Say, Lord, no. my fame, my, fame, my influence, my, influence, my stardom my stardom is for your glory. For your glory. Rusa makwata balaba. Lazima rusa ata. Now lift up your right hand for me. Jesus. Lift up your right hand for me. <laughs> Young lady, whatever removed the crown from your head, whatever took your crown, I address you in the spiritual realm. At the count of five, 
one, two, three, four, five. Rabba balala la bono nuasa ataniante. Rabu na kuriya sa atali paura. La brasa mama kubriya tolia sapa. Le papa kumpa pata. Le zuma kumpa kuriya. E papa kuaka papa di kato. Zuma mama is coming back. It's 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 coming back. Enough is enough. Some of you have sat down upon that greatness for too long. Watch now, I see fire coming upon hearts. Fire. You've sat upon that greatness for too long. Fire. You've sat on that gifting for too fire. long. Your hour has come. Fire. Your season has come. Yes. At the count of seven, no. all over this building. Of One, take yeah. it up. Two, take it up. Three, take it up. Four, take it up. Five, take it up. Six, take it up. Seven, take it up. Fire! Fire! Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Eno ka hasula, impara da kata, leva hasus, he ya papa ya ta, ikula de, ikula de, ikula de, hey, hey, ah, ya 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 ya. To Pastor Esther earlier today, or yesterday, or rather, listen, lift up your hand, everybody. Now, I want to say this last one. Uh, ushers, watch them. This one is heavy. I draw from the grace from the well that produced God is Africa. I draw from the well. Of giftings, of anointings, of creative abilities that produce God is Africa. The angels that delivered that revelation, the angels that delivered that idea, the impact of that project across towns, nations. Cities, a year and a call, a year and a call, a year and a call, a year and a call. You know, no, 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 see, and a whole, no, 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 no,
the agency that delivered that revelation that impacted a nation right now let that same grace that same anointing that same gifting that same ability let his single man of greatness yes Yes! 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 What in all is set as a fire? Set as a fire. Hey! He will bear to the very end. What in all is Set us on fire, set us on fire, that we will bear to the very continually set us on fire, set us on fire, yeah. that we will bear to the very Now, listen, one of I'm leading you into, I'm leading you to making very dangerous pronouncements. I'm talking to, maybe this is not for everybody. Maybe it's for two people here. Hear me closely. God said I should tell you, if I lift you up, will you remember my name? It might not be for everybody. If I lift you up, can I trust you? 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 I don't know who wants to answer that question. I don't know who wants to answer that question. Can I trust you? Can I trust you? Your intimacy with you. Lord, I want an intimacy. Your intimacy. Your intimacy. Lift up your hands. Extraordinary, extraordinary. Hey! Impossibilities, fascinating. You see it everywhere. You play the act of Muslim. You are a grand Listen, listen. I don't know what they think is impossible in your life. I don't know what your what your family background is. You look like there is no greatness. Nothing good can come out of you. But tonight, but tonight, but tonight, as running out with strategies, impossibilities, impossibilities, you are seated. Just open that way. Let's go there. Tonight, 
spoken in your life the opinion of family of friends lift up your hands tonight Jesus The, for the one who came in here frustrated who came in here asking God when who came in here and said God I'm tired lift up your hands now take it down a bit for me say yes oh casa oh casa this young Jesus. man whatever is necessary for greatness let the channels of your spirit open up whatever is needed for your greatness God said I should tell you your voice will be heard 
your voice will be heard your voice will be heard your voice will be heard your voice will be heard Listen, I want to explain to you that Listen, hear me. You've not come into an ordinary atmosphere tonight. Listen, for this particular meeting, for this particular meeting, I am excited at the numbers. For this particular meeting, I want you to know you didn't come into an ordinary atmosphere tonight. Something shifted for some people tonight. Somebody needed to be here tonight. Listen, listen, listen. For some people, 2022 was a year of preparation. But I prophesy, by this time next year, in your respective careers, may you see a formation, a semblance, a tangibility to what God is going to do. By this time, 2023, the doors that were shut in your face, the doors that men locked in your face, let them open up. Let them open up. Listen, the very mouths that wrote you off, the very eyes that dismissed you, I prophesy by the grace over this house, and that over the life of my brother in the next 12 months may the Lord turn around your story may the Lord turn your story around may the Lord turn your story around for the Lord is on the throne things, things are already better. better things are already better things are already better for the Lord I want you to I want you to listen for every information you've gathered tonight refuse to walk timidly stand as the daughter of the king that you are let them be excited about what gives them flamboyance but as for you stand like the daughter of the queen daughter of the king sorry stand like the daughter of your father square your shoulders refuse to be intimidated refuse to bow refuse to give up refuse to submit
against your life, against your rising. We command them to stop in the name of Jesus. Let that evil voice be silent in the matters concerning your destiny. Who is it that said and it come to pass when the Lord commanded it not? Who are they who have sat in a meeting, sat in agreement, and say, ask for this, bring that lady to me, bring her to me, bring her to me. That ask for this destiny. I lift up this song for what I see in your life and for other person. Holy Ghost. Yes, 
Everybody here to yes, mark Lord. to mark today's date down. Yes, Lord. The 10th of September yes, 2022. Yes, if I yes, be called of God, if what my yes. brother has testified be true, as we acknowledge the grace of God and the ability yes, of God to lift up a man. Not that we had parents who had it all. That if we can stand and acknowledge the deposits of grace that shaped our destinies. I prophesy over every life that stepped into this room this evening. Before the sun greets the skies. By the 10th of September 2023, whatever was out of place as regards your career and your destiny, whatever was missing, whatever was lost, whatever was broken, whatever was hindered, if God be God, we prophesy, let there be divine alignment. Let there be a divine coming together. Let your eyes see the formation. See the coming together of your destiny. I prophesy Jesus. upon this altar. Yes. Everyone here tonight. May the host of heaven. Yes, Lord. May the finger of God. Yes, Lord. Write your name in gold. Yes, Lord. Write your name in gold. Yes, Lord. Write your name in gold. Yes, Lord. Claim your place in the Ghana film industry. Claim your place in Africa. Claim your place in the continent of the world. May the Lord create space for you. The lines are falling onto you in pleasant places. Claim your portion. Possess your good of the land. 21 years ago, I was unknown. No one knew my name. As many who qualify as unknown in this room tonight. Hey, upon that same name, upon that same name, let there be a release of anointing upon that same name. Let angels carry your name abroad. Let angels carry your name abroad. Let your name cross through oceans. Let your name cross through boundaries. Jesus. Jesus. 
receive mercy says I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy receive mercy receive the peculiar attribute of God that dispenses mercy 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 whatever watch this now whatever movie set whatever platform you are supposed to be on that will shape your career now wherever that production is even if they are still planning it wherever it is we call for that opportunity right now. now we call for that opportunity right now. now from the east Jesus. from the west Jesus. from the north Jesus. from the south Jesus. we call for that opportunity right now. now we command, we command in the name of jesus, name of jesus. Opportunity. Opportunity. Come. Come. Opportunity. opportunity come let access be given let access be given let access be given for 30 years jesus existed known as the son of the carpenter but a day came as he stepped out of the jordan the bible says a voice from heaven in other words god had to reintroduce him to his generation i prophesy over somebody's Jesus. life okay. May the next season of your life Jesus. be the season yes, where Elohim himself yes, we reintroduce you. Yes, we reintroduce you. Yes, Let your gift and speak. Yes, Let your talent speak. In this industry, in this same industry, shine as the light. Yes. Your light will shine. Light will shine. Your, light will shine. your light will shine. Your voice will be heard. Your voice will be heard. My, my brother Majid Michel says, What power has light to shine if not in the midst of darkness? If I light a candle and take it out at 12 noon, the candle is of no effect. If I light that candle and I manage to take it out at 12 midnight, then you see the light of the candle. You are surrounded by darkness, but hear me tonight, your light will shine. Your light will shine. Your light will affect that darkness. The Bible said the light shineth in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. Live here tonight with grace. With grace. With grace. With grace. With grace. There's a brother who was sitting there. Has it gone? He was wearing a t-shirt. Is it gone? Come. Please let, let my brother Prince David pray for you. Go to Kubata Shalata Belende Pekatos Ipekula Shata Eta Kupo Eta Gaudi Eko Sish Asana Wayana Yeta Kupo Eta Gaudi Eko Listen, everybody here, watch me closing now. Everybody here, you hear me tonight? Everybody here. I say this with the sincerity of my heart. I just heard this in my spirit. I am called personally from today. Watch this now. From today, I am personally called and sent to everybody under the sound of my voice tonight. Jesus. Watch this. From today, I stand upon this altar and I volunteer myself to watch this to play a significant role in your life and in your careers. I, I stand and I speak the truth and I lie not before God. I stand under this auction and I yield myself to commit myself to play a significant role in your life and in your careers. I say this and I seal it with the auction of the Holy Ghost. And I pray and I say that if my eyes have seen stars made, if my hands have held the hands of stars in this industry, if I have witnessed men rise from nothing to something, I prophesy over your life. Very soon my very mouth will share your testimony. Jesus. My very eye will Jesus. see you. I call each and every one of you my divine connection from tonight. The 
the Lord has not failed me, if the Lord has not failed me, if he has turned my story around in this industry and made something out of a man who was given to such field as me and humbled me and not even honored me by putting a microphone in my hands and pouring oil over my head. May I be your priest sent to you tonight. By this divine connection, every failure is overturned. Every dying career is revived. Yes. Every dead opportunity is revisited. Yes. The years the canker worm, the plumber worm, and the caterpillar stole. Let there be divine restoration. Let there be divine restitution. In the name of Jesus. Let me quickly pray for everyone watching online. Everyone watching online, connecting. I know there are many people online. I see the shares in the, in the same industry as I am. I pray, let the same grace in this building tonight be extended towards you. Everything that has been shared tonight, if you like, rewatch the video, the broadcast over and over again. Rewatch it. It's time for the believer to take his or her place in the industry. Enough of the mediocrity, enough of the timidity. We rise as one voice. We rise with the auction of the Holy Ghost. Enough of the walking defeated. This is the season in which we take our rightful place. Let the same grace be over your life. The same anointing I extend to you. Receive the same mercy. Experience the same grace for acceptance. May the Lord announce you that career that seems dead I command it revived that opportunity that was closed I command it let it be revisited in the name of Jesus may the Lord help you may your light shine may your glory be seen in Jesus mighty name Amen God bless you God bless you you might cut the life now hallelujah everybody here who, who has been blessed this evening? Who's, who's glad they came? Are you sure you're...